Comes the man cave, aye, that's it. But uh, Jerry, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. My pleasure, man. My it's pleasure. Appreciated. Anytime, man. Good to see you. It's good and, to uh, be here. We're going to talk about all things music. Sounds good, man. Relating to yourself and also the band as yeah, well. Yeah, man. And uh, you're going to blow my mind with uh, your wisdom <laughs> and, your, and your knowledge. <laughs> Uh, 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 any, any assistance um, I'm happy to but, be here uh, first, 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 first of all how are you doing? <laughs> I'm alright man good how are you sir? Right? Gone not too bad man I actually, I actually prepared a couple of questions I wanted to ask you as well I didn't know how to study for this well, uh, well <laughs> <laughs> there was, there's got to be a test on Friday I don't know I don't know if to tell you that <laughs> See, the good thing is, Jerry, I don't know too much about you but I purposely didn't look up too much. Yeah, yeah. Because you can just tell me here. And I, I, I didn't know that much about me either, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. But uh, I've kind of got some bits and pieces. Yeah, man. Doing, right. But what we'll do is we'll just go right back to the very start. Yeah, so man. So where are you initially from? Where were you brought up? Uh, I'm for Denny, uh, Central Scotland, centre of the universe. Denny, of course. Um, and I'm born, uh, born in Stirling, but raised in Denny. Went to school yep. in Denny. Went to uh, high school in Stirling. Um, Went to university, uh, went to art school, moved to England, did the art school in England, yeah. Carlisle, Cumbria Institute of the Arts. Uh, did a fine art honours degree there. Uh, lived a bunch of places after that. It just wasn't as good as Denny. Just wasn't as good as Denny, mate. It just, I mean, I mean, once you've been to the chilli hut, that's it, you know what I mean? That's it, you never go back, you know what I mean? No, no. I mean, you want you like, that just reminds me of the pines. That's I know exactly, I <laughs> This paint's nice, but it's nae donner in. <laughs> it's the way to go, man. So it's see when you were really wee then, like wee boy growing up, were you aye into aye. music from a young age? Well, there was always music in my house growing up, man. It's uh, my earliest memories are just music in the Is house. Is this just the you parents know, playing? Just my mum and dad playing music. What they stuff were, were they playing? So they were kind of like they met at the like the mannequin and all right. that, you know. As, of as everybody does, everybody, everybody's mum and dad. For the at the dancing, <laughs> at the dancing, you know. <laughs> so they met there, and all the music that they listened to was like seventies. Uh, uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. I wouldn't call it disco, but they, they would call it like um, Motown. But it was. But but more the seventies Motown. You know, know the know the Tamla yeah. old school. Uh, Smokey and the Miracles but or your pop Martin music Gaines. as well back then was very different oh, to pop music nowadays time. it was still big time. bands and everything like legitimate thing, bands the one thing I will say about the 70s as well is that that's the golden age uh, music recording because that's when the money was being spent on making records and you can tell that you know there's, there's what's the old saying that like they say nowadays anybody can make music because all you need is a, a laptop or a phone you can get like garage band on your phone yeah, yeah. but um the old saying is, uh, but well, nowadays we've got uh, Pro Tools. Yeah. But back in the old days, you just had pros. You didn't have Pro Tools. Yeah. Just, and they were just pros because they did it first take, and that was it. Time was money, you know. I usually ask this question later on, but I'll ask it since we're kind of talking yeah, about it already, right? So you've you've seen um, the the TV series, classic albums, mm -hmm. right? And where they'll, they'll pick an album from the past and yeah, they dissect oh, wow, it wow. and they get all the... I've seen a bunch of them. Um, they get the uh, members of the bands, the, the recording engineers, and they'll, mm -hmm. they'll go through the tracks and explain how they, they came up with the album. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a really fascinating. It's see when, incredible. See, when you go back to the older bands, mm -hmm. see the bands from like the late 60s, mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. 70s, so the bands like The Who, mm -hmm. The Beatles, The Stones, The Doors, all these sort of bands... It, and let's be honest, the technology was crap. Mm -hmm. oh, it, it was so it was primitive. So, it was really it was primitive. so early. You're, You're talking, talking f four tracks. The Beatles recorded the first album on two track. Yeah. Which is insane. Those first know. album was a four track. Now, oh, yeah. they pretty was much, that a four track? Yeah. yeah they pretty oh. much recorded live in the studio. Aye. That because, was the way, Because man. they had been a house band mm -hmm. at the Whiskey and a few other places. Exactly. Right? Yeah, so they, the early strip they, they had to, to know how to play. Mm -hmm. their instruments and how to play the song start to finish they went in mic'd everything up that's it and I think they had one track free for any for overdubs, overdubs for any or buying vocals or screams or, or percussion stuff, like, or stuff that. like that yeah because when they done their, <coughs> they done their second album mm -hmm. they, they'd got some there's more money the company uh, had got some money yeah. so they got an 8 track and yeah, they thought yeah, that yeah. that was outstanding well to give you an idea I don't even think Abbey Road had an 8 track yeah. At the time when the do when the doors recorded that way, was it was it was it Bosnick the guy yeah, that was in Chris Bosnick. So I don't think even Abbey Road because the first time that Abbey Road got a 
16 track I want to say it, it could have been 8 track but it might be an 8 or a 16 track was uh, Abbey Road album the last Beatles album mm-hmm. so that's 69 and the guy <coughs> everybody that went to Abbey Road Studios was like you would think it was the cutting edge te- uh, yeah. it wasn't the cutting edge technology but they, they had the best engineers they had guys that would, in, would invent oh Rothschild was another one yeah or Rothschild uh, he was uh, he was a uh, he was uh, it was it not him that produced them he produced yeah. the Beatles records I. But, but without him they wouldn't have no, no, no. done these great albums. But the point I was trying to make was, you go back then, and the technology that all these mm. bands were using was really poor. Mm-hmm. But the, the music they you created to be able to was play. absolutely right. outstanding, right? And the question I normally ask is, because technology was so primitive, it was so poor back then, mm-hmm. it forced the bands into being as creative as, as they possibly could yeah, to get yeah. these songs, to get a sound. Over time, technology is so easily accessible mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. but has that had a detriment effect on the a band's songwriting ability? A band's lazier so, now because of that. So I don't know if bands are lazier, but it just means that the entry level is a lot lower in terms of being a being able to make a hit because yeah. you you just you can spend a whole day uh, comping a vocal take. I don't know if you've seen. There's a video where. Uh, uh, what's that? What's her name? Billy, Billy Eilish, obviously. Yeah. Massive star, and she shows David Letterman the <coughs> the vocal track, and it's this one big the, you know, the vocal track you've seen in a proto yeah, session, yeah. and the amount of times that's been cut, bang, 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 like that. And I think it was, I think there was some like 80, 80 odd comps on. Uh, so she that just took this together, like words at a time. Go after go after go, and then just editing and then they pick the best bits. Like, uh, but they create but, the ultimate but, track. But that in itself is the new a new process. That's, that's the, just cutting and splicing from the old days. That's the same technique that Quincy Jones would use for Michael Jackson to get Michael Jackson's vocals. That's why when you hear the Michael Jackson vocals, they're so crisp, they're so they're so tight, you know. But, but Quincy take co- it might have been slightly exactly. different, so you maybe miss a wee bit of magic one mm-hmm. time, but you, and next mm-hmm. time he doesn't do it. But we'll yeah, take yeah. that bit. But then we'll take that bit. And exactly, and it would take it would like they would. Sl- I mean, it they makes would sense so hard to get it to get it as perfect as possible. It you know? makes sense because. If you're going through all the effort of recording a song, you want it to sound as as good as possible. Yeah, man. Right? But the other thing as well, though, is that if you're a perfectionist, mm-hmm. you could tinker away in it forever mm-hmm. and never actually finish the thing. Another thing that need, people need to bear in mind as well when they're thinking about this is that the album isn't the same thing that it, it wasn't always the same thing that it is right now. So, like, if you think about, they used to call them <laughs> long players. So the, the Rolling Stones, we, we, we got a, we got a new long player coming out this week, you know, making yeah. <laughs> the run doing that. And a, a, an, a, an album was a collection of singles because yeah. it was a way to make money out of material. This is what people think the al- an album's this this heralded thing, yeah. like, storytelling. But the album was really just a way to make money out of singles that were made. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll put the four singles on. We'll make more money because we're yeah. selling them again. We're getting it a bigger price. It did change over time. So, so when you think about that, right, and then you think about Sergeant Pepper's comes out with the Beatles. The Beatles are, have had this point where <coughs> they're no longer going to be confined by. And another thing about the Beatles as well is they never put singles on albums because they didn't want to make people feel like they were getting done out of their money. So, right, like, okay. so, so Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields isn't the own Sergeant Pepper. Yep. It's Sergeant Pepper doesn't have a single to almost type thing. So that was their mm-hmm. mentality. But when you hear, when you see someone like Sgt. Pepper come out, <coughs> that changes the game because right now there it's no longer capturing a live band. It's no longer this is the thing that happened in the room. Oh my god, listen like when you listen to Honky Tonk Women with the Stones, that's a band in a room. And, and you can no, you can feel it, to, you can taste the air, it's if so you were sweet, to, you know. To be able to hear those individual tracks, mm. they'll be it'll be bleeding. They'll, they'll be bleeding into everything, yeah. man. But but when you get to Sgt. Pepper, it's like there's something that happens where the, the, they are, and I, I think we kind of take that for granted. We take we take for granted the fact that you've got all these prog bands that came later, and yeah. uh, well, late, late sixties those prog bands kind of like where uh, Poker Harm were, were doing kind of proggy kind of stuff, I suppose. But um, it's, it's a story, you know. It's like it's that's a start. Of it. Made and amazing, and they're they're icons that you know, seven minute, thirteen minute yeah. long songs. But you have to remember, like the album wasn't the same thing. So the the quality, the fidelity, wasn't. The, always is prized to be that high now if you get into the 70s right you get we've went way past the fact that the album isn't just a collection of songs it's an artwork it's, it's, it's something a, it's something yeah. that you listen to if you start to finish it's a different thing so I think a lot of us still love that and respect that and 
a lot of us when we make records or we produce records for bands, we're still trying to <laughs> put like a running order for the album where you go, oh, this will be the, right, we'll start off with a banger but and the, then there, the, the and the then track there's listing, a... <laughs> the track you know listing, mean? some would argue it's still important. So, some, mm, depending I don't on, know, I, I don't think, think it depends so. what age you are. Yeah. Right, but some people, like <clears> a lot of the people I've spoke to previously, mm-hmm. when I've said to them, talking about, we're jumping a bit ahead here, but no, we're talking about it anyway. <laughs> so a lot of people ask the question, you know, when we were growing up, mm-hmm. you'd go into music shop. Of right? course, okay, there's still music shops, but they're, they're scarce. You, could, you could listen to an album. Right, but you would go well, in, <clears> flip through <throat> the CDs, whether it be vinyl, CDs, whatever, buy whatever you're wanting. You would go and buy an album. Mm-hmm. You would go home, you'd put, put it on, you'd be reading through the, the booklet. Of course, right? I, I. You'd have maybe another 12 CDs sat there. Mm-hmm. You knew those albums, oh, start I. to finish because you didn't have anything else Aye. to access. Exactly. The most you would have is if you maybe swapped with a pal mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and made a copy or something like that. It's so back then, the artwork was just as important as the track listing mm-hmm, and the mm-hmm. order, just as important as the songs. That's it, right, it, yeah. It was a full package. And the question I ask is, is it still important? Because now, the way that you access music... Mm-hmm. The, if you were to ask, I, I reckon if you were to ask anybody under the age of 30, mm-hmm. they'd, they'd maybe not see that as, as relevant because if you're streaming or downloading, mm-hmm. what does it matter what the track listing is? What does it really matter? If, okay, think, okay, the artwork's still cool. It might, uh, it might still make it pop and stand out when you're searching online or something, yeah. but it's not... Some, think, some would argue that it's a, not important. There's a, the thing is, there's been a real change to how we consume music. Even, even like... Uh, folk that are long established music <coughs> fans that it's totally changed there's guys that have been into vinyl and they're on Spotify now you know and there's kids that grew up with Spotify who are now into vinyl you know, so, yeah. but, so there is people that are uh, lusting for that that tangible thing you know with the, with the big booklet and the lyrics yeah, and, yeah, and so the artwork and the bit where it tells you who produced it who but, engineered it but at the same time right, you have to think about this as well you, the way that we consume music has changed so much that um, when you look at the numbers that are on Spotify, you'd be lucky if probably half the people listening to your stuff knows the name of the song they're listening to, so they'll like it when it comes up. Yeah. But so so y- you see this trend with your albums. So we've I've been involved with a bunch of records, and you can obviously get your stats, you can get your you get your figures, you get your royalty payments yep. and stuff that come in. So you can see what's been streamed, what's been played, mm-hmm. and it's really evidently clear that the people are. Dipping in and out, you know. There's people that'll listen to. Do they even listen to a song start to finish anymore? There's people that'll listen to your single <coughs> that will never ever listen to the rest of the record. So, for me, I'm an old school guy. I like I like an album. I want it to be a journey. I want it to start somewhere and it, you take them somewhere and it and it ends with a big yeah. a big finale. But a lot of people just they don't experience it like that. Another thing as well about <coughs> when you the way we listen to music that I find you'll probably know this. We've been in bands for years and stuff like that. When you when you used to mix a record you would maybe bounce it to a CD yeah. and, or a cassette and you'd go into your car. <laughs> Whatever one of you guys in the band had a good yeah. stereo and you'd be like, like, get the car test, everybody, come on, come on. Yeah. So they'd bounce a mix and you'd listen to it in the car and be like, right, right, right. Oh, it's amazing. You'd be like, oh, the bass needs up a wee bit. Oh, that kicks a wee bit yeah, flat. Yeah. And you'd do that. So the way things have changed that much that what we do in the studio when we, when we mix records for, for people and stuff like that is we have uh, the phone test. Right. And we have like the radio test, so we've got a a, a set like a, a speaker set up that is like a radio speaker. Yeah. So what frequencies are you going to pick up? And then we've got one that is like an iPhone kind of, you know that 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 yeah. the dingy wee thing there. Yeah, yeah. Because you're basically trying to capture. The There's so many different things yeah. you can hear it through. <laughs> exactly. But when we were back in the when I was in the nineties, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I was in a band and we were recording that, mm-hmm. we had. Um, it would be a, a couple of different places we would record, but they had like the shittest <laughs> stereo, like, yeah, like, yeah. A, like a radio, like, like a, a radio. tape, double tape. Yeah, tape yeah, yeah. They would ha- have that hooked up to to their uh, mixing desk because wow. if, if you can get it good, so sounding good that's through that, a, and that's it. then it's going to sound good because that's it. Yes, it's going to sound good through the thousand pound speakers. That it always there. does. That, 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 See, they're hyped get, up. If you can get it feel sounding it like that, good man. through the twenty five pound mm-hmm. shitty recorder from Argos, then that's it. Exactly. Then it's going to sound good through so, anything else so, that you listen so to. Through we are the very same. We'll mix with like speakers that are like the, the, the big speakers, the expensive yeah, big of speakers. Course. 
but the ones that you're really doing the mix notes on are listening to it on a phone or like you say you've got your bus the many times so I, I'll still <coughs> pop something on I don't have a CD player in the car but yeah, I'll yeah. pop it on a USB yeah man and I'll go out to the, car, the car and I'll just be sitting there listening my neighbours will wonder what I'm doing that's it aye. and I'm just like I want to see how it sounds because everything sounds amazing mm. in the car <laughs> <laughs> well, depends what kind of car mind you I suppose <laughs> yeah but um, <coughs> talking about that we'll go right back to the yeah man so aye, aye. music is in your house your parents in my have house. got the tunes on the go what bands are they listening to? What are they exposing so, you to? So, my mum is listening to Rod Stewart because she is Rod Stewart daft. Right, and okay. she's loving that. But in she the is, 70s. In this, I mean, 70s Rod Stewart. But no, this would have been like 80s, 70s Rod Stewart, 80s but Rod Stewart. But he's still massive. His 80s, 80s stuff is, is uh, fire. Yeah. I love it. And, and, and only later did I go back and listen to the Faces and the Jeff Beck group, which I love. Um, and my, my dad was kind of listening to a lot of Motown stuff and... Uh, uh, but but loads and loads of music. I, I, guitars were never really a, a audible feature in a lot of music. I remember when I was wee, my mum got all her old uh, 45s and vinyls out the out the loft, yeah. and I had this 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 record player on top of the the tape tape cassette thing yeah, yeah, yeah. that I used to listen to tapes on. And uh, the first time I, I remember listening, she had like all these, and I was raking through all these vinyls. Some of the pictures of them are amazing, you know. Mm. Uh, the three that really stuck with me were the leader of the pack, leader of the pack by the Shangri Las. Right. Incredible. The B side was uh, Walking in the Sand. Absolutely incredible songs. Uh, and then the other two were Hot Love by T Rex. Right. And I had a it was a picture disc with Mark Bowen. You know, looking looking look, 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 cool. Look, looking all cool with it in, in a fair minute with this, this Les Paul. And the other one was My Sweet Lord by. Um, George Harrison right and that was the three that I just I just went what what are these they were literally the first three in the top right. and I just played them and so I just fell in love with it you know? I remember looking through the, my dad's records mm -hmm. and the two that stood out was Morrison Hotel yeah oh, wow so, so that's, see that's a cool see, man they're just, they're that's pretty cool just look cool yeah. and then you turn it over to the back and they're yeah. in the bar drinking that's it you know, the old timers that's cool and the other one was the who it was pinball wizard and the front was a <laughs> pinball machine and then it's yeah. obviously Keith Moon must have shot, chucked a wee uh, a wee cherry bomb or something right? the thing was blown up on the other side aye. and I was like that's pretty that's cool, cool man. <coughs> so you're obviously getting whether you know it or not you're, you're aye, getting, you're oh, getting wow, influenced by, by your parents they've got the tunes mm -hmm. on the go mm -hmm. what age were you when you discovered your own type of music that you enjoy and what were some of the bands initially yeah. that, that you were discovering for yourself? Well, um, in the 90s we obviously had the Britpop stuff that was happening uh, so that was always there, you know, and I was into that stuff probably younger than most people because my sister was, my sister's five years older than me so she was, so she's got stuff she was blasting out of them. So she's playing like um, Oasis, uh, Blur, she's playing um the Stone Roses, she's playing like ocean all that stuff, scene, ocean travel, colour scene. Saw these but she's all, but she's also playing uh, songs like pop, pop music that like Max, Max Martin would have wrote. Right. So, so she's <laughs> listening to like the Backstreet Boys. She's listening to like NSYNC and uh, Britney Spears and stuff. Like that. So there's, a, so there's this kind of it's, it's nineties though. So that's that's the culture. And when I look back at that now, like knowing the songwriting uh, weight that goes into all the pop songs. Yep. Like it, it really like. N no rock guy wants to admit, but but when I when you're in the studio working with bands, the the pop sensibilities are what will help you get the record well, finished or make make the best out of a record. I really. mean, I'm not I'm not a pop guy. Mm. There is a reason why these songs mm -hmm. sell millions. Of course, because yeah. they have got a bloody catchy hook. Exactly, and that is all you need. Doesn't ma almost the words in that are almost irrelevant. You can a lot of the time you can kind of be singing anything <coughs> but, but they, you could say that, you could say that about rock music as well you could say that about rock music well, rock music all rock music you might not even understand mm -hmm. what they're saying so exactly you, you could pretty much be exactly. saying anything I, I love I love like a lot of different world music I love like um, a, a Japanese city pop I don't know if you've heard much of that no. oh my god uh, or, or Yugo Wave <laughs> Yugo Wave is a uh, music for Yugoslavia before they, they, they had the war and it broke up right. but it sounds like because it's communist and they didn't have western music all their songs Just sound a like. Approach. All their, no, no. All their songs sound like 
Yugoslavian versions of pop songs that already exist. And oh, it's, right. it's amazing, but it's, it feels like you're in this weird uh, parallel universe where the Cold yeah. War went differently or something like that. But there's or uh, or uh, Cabo Verde music for Cape Verde. There's 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 like uh, that's like African music, but it has synths in it and stuff like that. So there's like there's so much stuff that is like mind blowing. Right? Yeah. Oh, and and I don't know, I don't understand the words to it. Yeah. But I'm just like this is you this is this is sometimes. fire. You know, this is fire. So <laughs> you're listening to all this Britpop, yeah, 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 and and the on the flip side the the pop stuff mm. coming out at oh, wow, the same why? time. I would have been is really that, wee. I would have been at primary school. Yeah, so. yeah. is that wh- when do you pick up your first instrument? So for me, I think um, there was a guitar that was so on the back of that. So there was that music, and the first music I remember really listening to probably was the Beatles intentionally yep. myself. I remember my auntie had a wee tape and we used to play it in the car and it had all these, it was like a mix of Beatles songs that she had taped for vinyl yep. and then it would crackle as it came on, you know and uh, that was my first uh, interaction with the Beatles music and we actually used to sing Beatles songs at music class at school we would like they would have us singing these songs just because there was like there wasn't enough money for musical instruments, so <laughs> they just had all these poor un- unwashed yeah. dazed kids singing Beatles songs but uh, for, for the instrument wise I remember I think I would have been in primary school, late days in my primary school. Did you know I have them sticks that you clicked together? Yes, <laughs> exactly, because I'm clammy. I've had to have them because, with this. Because, because <laughs> I've got all the instruments. Let's be honest, you, you'd struggle to get a glock spiel that had yeah, all, all well, the notes. Aye, aye. Or you'd have a beer when you'd no beer <laughs> when the end and I. Or you'd have a glock spiel there'd be notes missing so you couldn't actually play the tune. No, no. Indian <laughs> bell, there's only one. There's only one of the strings. Smack it off your pal. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that was it, man. It was, it was good times man but for but the Beatles was the first thing that opened my eyes I was like wow these songs are so catchy <laughs> and uh, absolutely amazing but loads of stuff as well there was always loads of music I remember my mum had like a Queen tape yeah. and my mum uh, used to have that subscription that used to, you know there was like that Britannia yeah, subscription yeah, yeah, yeah. so my mum had that so she would get stuff that that, that she would like my dad would like and then maybe stuff we would like you'd get a CD for Christmas yeah or something like that but there would be stuff that would sneak in do you remember what the first ever CD or album was that you bought with your own money, not not a Christmas right. present or that. So that you went to the shop and you want you said I want Aye. that. The first thing I remember listening to intentionally was a a tape that was a tape. My, my sister was into Michael Jackson as well, right. so my granny bought her this tape and it was a big it was a pair of shoes with the socks, and, and my granny thought that's make it like. <laughs> like, oh, yo, Michael, did you go see yeah. Wow, man. <laughs> but it was, it was like, uh, but it wasn't a Michael Jackson tape. That was like my sister, my, my granny thought it was Michael Jackson, and it ended up being a Shawadi Wadi tape. Oh, right, okay. And my sister was like, "This is garbage. <laughs> you can have that." So I've got the big tape deck with the vinyl record thing, and my yeah, sister's yeah, got yeah. a CD player. So I stuck it in, and it's like, um, and it was like Shawadi. It was classic. It was like a Shawadi Wadi best of. Sometimes because you don't have you don't have access to everything, you just make do with Aye. what you've got. And I was I was so wee, I, pro- I was probably maybe about five. Yeah. And I just remember like just kind of jumping about and thinking, what is this? Yeah. And it just it just filled you with such joy. I think as an adult, I still I didn't get that same thing for that music. Yeah. Um, but to me, music was all about joy and, and filling you with that joy. So the first record I I remember buying, right? I don't. It, it, it would. I remember the first album I bought was a Run DMC album. I think it was a Run DMC record, because um, there was a phase in the it, like the late nineties and where every school kid was into rap music. Yeah, yeah. So like, I, so I had all the rap records as well as all the rock records. But the first single I think I remember buying right uh, would have been. I want to say it was either Lou Beggar Mambo Number no. Five, right, <laughs> okay. or it was Miami by Will Smith. It was one of uh, whatever one you need to Google that, but what, whichever one came first. Brave that you're admitting that. I, 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 I've got no, um, the, I've got no worries. The kind of people say guilty pleasures, yeah. which like, you should never feel guilty about uh, feeling pleasure. So I remember, <laughs> I remember my dad. <laughs> was, <laughs> just sit, I can just remember sitting in the car. My dad. We yeah. all, always had the Who on. Oh, yeah, I, I, I doors, loved the Who as well. The Creed and I, I all these sort of bands, but, but I remember, you know, I was listening to all, all that stuff, but I'm listening Aye. to. It, just because he's putting he's on, going on you I... know, I'm just sort of oh, sitting wow. there, and uh, but I can remember, you know, you'd like some of the pop songs that were because you were, it was in the eighties. I'm, mm. I'm young, aye, aye. Up. and then I can remember. This is how old I am. That it wasn't a video shop, mm-hmm. right? It, but it, I'd got a video of a film. Right, right. But back then, when you bought a video, you had like twenty minutes of 
trailers, trailers and the adverts. Of course, aye, aye. So you had to fast forward down to get to the start of the movie. Well, all your VHS stuff. And I don't know, I don't know what it was advertising, but there was there was mm. this one uh, movie that I liked, and it, the trailers at the start, they were, it was advertising some type of music thing. Mm-hmm. So it had like maybe it was like a minute clip of however many bands, yeah, and yeah. one of them was U2. Wow. Was that the classic albums thing you were talking about? No, no. That, this oh, was long before. they're amazing. That, this was just U2 in concert, so I don't mm-hmm. know what it was advertising, oh, right. but it was U2 playing Sunday Bloody Sunday. Right, wow. And or Red Rock. It'd be live at Red it, Rock. But it was aye. just, I think it was when it, aye. they did that Zoo Tour thing. Oh, the they Zoropa. Did, aye, aye. Yeah. Aye. But obviously it was that thing where I was just like, I like Incredible. that. Obviously, you, I'm listening to it, I'm thinking, great. Totally, it's got it's great time. melody, and then it's the fact that it, the multimedia it, thing as it's well. It's not pop; it, it's a band. It's guys with instruments. Yeah, playing, so man. I think that's kind of what got me on the path. Mm-hmm. And because uh, I can remember, my uncle gave us. A, my uncle was really, mm-hmm. really into his music, and he gave me a copy of Iron Maiden. Right, Fear wow. Of the Dark. I nice. didn't like it. It's uh, a killer I, record. I didn't like man. it. But then about a year later, you went by to my it. friend came down. Oh. I, saw I was about ten. Yeah, yeah. And he had. Master of Puppets, a right, copy wow. of it. I popped that and I was like, I don't know That's what this is, but album. I'm loving this. And That's from killer. there, it's like you go out and you buy an album, and you yeah, know, package a copy of something, yeah, and, yeah. Blah, blah, and it just goes That's on, and it. it just never stopped from there. I, rem- I remember my cousin, <coughs> he is a couple years older than me, uh, he brought a guitar into the house because yep. he, he had got it for his Christmas or birthday or something, and it was like a strat, encore strat copy <laughs> yep. with sunbursts, you yep. know, Rosewood Neck. And I remember seeing this thing going, wow, what, you know, what is that? And f- to my memory, it had a strap that was like too short or something, and there was a bit of string or red string tied to it. <laughs> okay. It's my memory, just one of the things that I remember. But um, I remember he had this guitar, and I was like, wow, that's that guitar, let's hear it, let's, what is it, can you play it, can you play something for it? And he starts like st- strumming some yeah. kind of chord, and I was kind of <clears> looking, <throat> looking at it kind of blankly, and I was like, why does it, can you make it sound like a guitar? <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I didn't, that wasn't yeah. a, that wasn't a slight by any means, but in my mind, I, like the only electric guitar that I was aware of was the big showcase electric guitar part in a song. So it'd be like, yeah, yeah. so like um, it's super cheesy, but like you know, like when when in and like Bill and Ted or something, when they when they go excellent, and they go and they, and they do that like that. So in my memory, that's yeah. what a guitar was supposed to. So I was like, can you make it sound like that? That like the, like a like, like wild a, like a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? I was yeah. like, why, when when does it get to the bit where it sounds like a guitar? But in my brain, you're you're like that. Why is not that? Oh, that, 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 that noise? <laughs> plug it in. It just makes that noise. <laughs> but we were talking about that, and then and then he showed me how to play a couple of songs, and I was like, well, that's grand. And uh, it was like Come As You Are, uh, yeah. Nirvana songs. There was like uh, so. What was some of the first? So- how did you first of all learn the guitar? Did you go to lessons or were I you went, self-taught? I went to one lesson, right? Right. And I was already playing a wee bit of guitar. Uh, I didn't want to pick or anything like that, but I was already playing a wee bit of guitar. And I went to one lesson, and the guy wanted us to play. Uh, high, uh, he wanted to play high hole silver line, and it was like a big. It was a thrash. That's what I like think it. It was like everybody in the same room just thrashing these chords, man. You know. <laughs> oh no, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. And I'm do, do you know who it was? Like, uh, you know, it was in Falkirk somewhere. I couldn't tell you the name of the guy. Yeah. I want to say his name was Ian Paul Gibson. It was like it was like I don't know I don't know if that's even a real human. I maybe just made that up. Right. <laughs> it's like it's like a it's like it a folk. Like it was a group. Scene. It was a room of like maybe thirty uh, right, okay. people, m- m- kind of guys, lassies, different ages, well, all with guitars. And I had yeah. like I had borrowed a guitar because I could I, I never I actually. Could, what age are you? Oh man, I'm maybe like ten or eleven. Right, okay. But, but I actually could play guitar before I owned a guitar. Right. Because when I was wee, I remember saying to my mum, "Can I get a guitar? I'd love to get a guitar yeah, for yeah. birthday." And my mum says, "Well, you can get a guitar if if you can play a guitar, you can get a guitar." Yeah. And I was like, "Well, how, how can I how can I let me play a guitar if I didn't if I didn't own?" So I used to like befriend people that were music guys yeah, and yeah. just get a Lenny. They'd go, "You big brother got a guitar? Ah, he's got a guitar. Can I get a Lenny?" Uh, and I would have a I would have an acoustic one. Are you just figuring it out then? I'm just figuring it. Out. I mean, the, my cousin who came in the house and showed me and showed me his guitar, he showed me like uh, "Become as You Are." Right. But that opening riff, there was uh, maybe Teen Spirit, a couple of licks. Oh, the standard um, 90s kind yeah. of songs. And, yeah, and the Oasis, there was 
Half the World Away by Oasis, yeah. which was in the, that master plan record. It was a great C chord kind of F I nine. Quite a lot thing. with no, doing not very just much. Just simple chords, and then there was like just like all that all that stuff, you know, um, and Sally Cinnamon and all, again nineties yeah. stuff really, eh? and um, and then it gradually. Um, I, so I went to this one lesson. I didn't even, I didn't even know what I was doing. Eh? Yep. And I was saying to the guy, he was like, right, we're going to play, I think it was like Polly Wally Doodle or something like that. Right. We're going to play Polly, Polly Wally Doodle or whatever it was. And I'm like, can you show me how to play Purple Haze, mate? And <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like I, can't I, don't think, I don't think you're ready for that yet. But then like what, about a week later, I was I was playing Purple Haze. Yeah. Because cause I, cause I was like, I want to, and, I, and I'd got the first the first couple of licks. Yeah. And my, my cousin who had a guitar, I was like, how will I remember this? So he, he got the piece of paper and goes like the lines, the and he wrote tab. and he wrote doing the tab for "Come as You Are" yeah. on the the kind of the top two strings, and that was that was me learning how to read tab just by yeah. that. Dun 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 dun. What's dun, funny is I can like, remember wow, starting a wee band and a similar idea yeah, like yeah. Get, we need to get another guitarist. Ah, yeah. This guy who who he could hardly hold the guitar. <laughs> Right? Yeah. And then it was like, I'll write the tab out for you. Yeah, yeah. Now, we're doing heavy metal stuff, so, <laughs> so it's all like bass, the bottom E chord, and it's dig 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 dig. Uh, it's all yeah, like, yeah. Zero, 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 zero. No, 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 man. X, 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 It's so ridiculous. So you're obviously like so funny. learning your instrument. Yeah, man. Was there any other instruments, or were you just like guitar, man? The only one we had in the house was a guitar. I think my sister had a. An old Casio keyboard yeah. like the type of thing you get for Argos or something like that, but so, uh, so it was a guitar really, and it was it, and to me it was like again it was a utility instrument. I, like it, even today I still think it is. I didn't fetishize them. Like I, I've got I've, I have got some nice guitars, but um, I didn't fetishize them because they are they're tools. You know yeah. that, that you make like a Les Paul and a Strat and a Tele are only as good as the sound that they make. It is know? amazing the amount of people you know I mean? that. Think they're going to play better because they've got a more expensive well, that's instrument. Well, don't get me wrong. Some of them are are lovely. Aye, aye. But it's not going to make if you can't play it, you can't play it. That's it. I always, I'm always in a weird position because when people come up to me and say that to me, what get my, my my sons want to play guitar or what, what what guitar should I buy? Or somebody's going, I want to learn what what should I buy? And you kind of feel bad. You can, like you didn't want to give them bad advice because a bad guitar will put you off playing guitar. You know. And when I was learning, like I said, I would beg, borrow, and steal a guitar off of yeah. people. And so I think by the time I could play guitar, I had already had like five or six different instruments over the space of a year and a half. Yep. And that that was like acoustic guitars, Strat copies, Telecaster copies. And then I remember uh, seeing there was a channel uh, on Sky that was like VH1 classic rock. Do you remember aye, that? Aye. And it was only on at a ridiculous o'clock. <laughs> and I used to be obs- I used to stay up uh, like with bags in my eyes and then go to school the next morning like it was some holy religious thing they were going to show you and I remember seeing like Led Zeppelin for the first time on that yep. doing a whole lot of love but then playing live them playing live and then I remember seeing uh, uh, MC5 doing Kick Out The Jams but that was a big thing like as well <coughs> because back when I was learning like I'm talking mm-hmm. like 1990 mm-hmm. 91 mm-hmm. so you've not got the internet you don't have that's it aye. you don't have YouTube exactly similar to yourself I wanted mm-hmm. a guitar and my parents were like, mm-hmm. well, it's expensive, it is expensive. Oh, definitely, you know? but, but my parents didn't have much, so it's like, we'll get you one, but mm-hmm. you need to go to lessons you need to, to, to learn the, the basics. Aye, aye. Okay, that, that was the compromise. <coughs> right, so I'm like, that's fine. That's it. And, uh, and I didn't enjoy the The lessons were similar to yourself. Yeah, it, was, it was four or five mm-hmm. uh, in a group. Yeah, yeah. We, oh, all, we all started step one, book one kind of thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And obviously each week, you come in you some people would progress further yeah, than yeah. I wasn't That's progressing cool. at all because the stuff was boring yeah, yeah. but I was going to that but mm-hmm. then I was spending the next six days trying to learn my own stuff yeah yeah and uh, luckily you, you'd maybe you'd go into a music shop and you'd maybe find a book you would get a book on of, like of a band that you liked and if you were yeah. really lucky the tab That's would go down the bottom yeah yeah and but it's still music <laughs> so it's still sheet music so but then they were like well he's still enjoying it mm-hmm. in every spare minute you're trying to like play stuff and mm-hmm. all that oh aye aye it's pretty cool but uh, it's funny though you're saying like as you go on like talking about guitars and stuff because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm doing all the gigs been playing for years mm-hmm. I just bought my first guitar there and uh, that's the first guitar I've bought in over 20 years wow 
And wow. uh, people, well ex- people expect. I need to take it, some notes off you then. People I, expect yeah, it, buying gear. But the people expect it to be. Well, you played guitars for years. You've already got guitars. I bet you it was like thousand. People think it's a Martin D20 or something. Right? Well, that, and you know what? I was like, that's a good price. It either sounds that good or it doesn't. I tell you if, right now, if, right, I, if I can play it, my, it's going to sound alright. If, if I can't play, my main guitar, right, my main live <laughs> guitar, is I, I play a lot of stuff in the studio. I play, I play loads of different things in the studio. But for live, my main guitar is a gold Gibson SG with P90s. And if I didn't play that guitar at gigs, yep. people come up to me and say, "Have you still got that? Have you still got that gold guitar?" I'm like, "Aye, man, I'm playing something different than it." But like, so, so people want me. They kind of want me to do it because that's yeah. the Jerry Sun and the smoking gun guitar almost. Yeah. It, you'll see it in a lot of the videos. You know, it was funny I, when I was <laughs> playing the band in the nineties, and there was a lot of guys. You, you get to know all the bands playing. Mm-hmm. You're all playing mm-hmm. the same circuit and that. And there was a guy in another band. And he was a few years older than me, right? Right, right. Nice guy, but he was like Jay from the in between us. He just lied <laughs> about everything, right? And and it could have been like. This microphone's black. No, no, it's no black. Uh, yeah, right, yeah. Like it was just live for the sake of lying. Yeah, yeah. Right, and it, I can remember him coming to a gig and he's like, "Come here, come here. right?" And I go across. Now everybody's shown up and they've got guitar cases yeah, that are yeah. falling apart. And oh, yeah. You've you no, nobody's got That's any it. nice equipment. No, it's not all just, at all, man. But it, not at all. It's all kind of up and coming stuff. And he comes in and he's got this metal case with padlocks on it. Wow. Right. And he's like, "Come here." You're like, what is this going to be? And I'm like, waiting to either be. Really disappointed <laughs> or really amazed. Or blown away, aye, aye. No, I'm telling you, right, he, aye, aye. he was J from the in-between us right. before the in-between us existed. <laughs> so what was it then? It sounds sound shocking. No, no. It was the ugliest guitar I've ever seen, <laughs> okay. right? It was fucking ho- awful, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding you. He, in all seriousness, was uh, like... He was like, it's the, this, 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 this is, is the shit, this, this is the shit right here. This was, <laughs> this was built, this was built from one of the parts of one of the UFOs that crashed <laughs> that, that crashed the area I love this one. guy I need to meet this guy I need to meet this guy and he opened it up right and it, it looked like oh my the guitar God, looked man. like it was made of metal it was like yeah, yeah, the aye. ugliest aye, most aye. disgusting guitar you've ever amazing, seen man. and I was like that is amazing that's man. fucking awful and I went to pick up whoa whoa whoa, yeah, whoa aye, aye. try to touch it he's like that. don't he, even look at it don't even look at it he's like that there's people looking for this <laughs> that's amazing I was man. like so hold on so, so there's a space an alien spaceship has crashed oh, yeah, yeah, America and you've made that into a guitar somebody has managed to you've secretly to lo- take a bit of the into a guitar wing <laughs> I've made it into a guitar <laughs> FBI, we're going to make space FBI music it, and some wee ball bag from Falkirk has got his hands in it high. he's at a rehearsal on a Tuesday night <laughs> that's why I always laugh at them with that's Twitter right ridiculous. because you're like oh Jay he's so ridiculous oh no, no. man I know somebody. A, everybody knows a guy like that, the way. Right? Everybody knows and you know what's like funny, right? See, years later, years later, mm-hmm. I, I'm working and uh, I was in this office and it's like, there was a big restructure. Yeah, like, yeah. Right, you get moved to this, you know, second floor, go into this new team, mm-hmm. goes in, meet the team, and uh, they're like, oh, this person yeah. is, uh, oh, he, they're off today, but they'll be in. It's like, oh, who is it? It was, it, that it, it was that guy. <laughs> was that guy. Did you mention the, the, the spaceship guitar? No, no. But, but like, I was like, oh, he's off. I was like, ah. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know this person. And they're like, oh, God, eh. They started telling me all these things. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, that's nonsense. Oh, yeah. That's a lie. That's, a that's lie. nonsense. And, uh, wow. and he'd said to them, and I didn't know why they all believed him, oh, yeah. right? Because he's driving a, 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 an escort that's hung, <laughs> held together by masking tape, right? <laughs> He toured a few oh, summers before he, he toured North America right. supporting Metallica. Wow. With this UFO yeah, guitar. Yeah, he still, the so, FBI so he still, still Was he still playing the UFO guitar? Yeah. <laughs> well, like 10 years later. Like, he's still like, got he's, it to this day. Oh, wow. Hey, the FBI's. And this is 20 year, the over FBI 20 years need, later. They need to pull their socks up, by the way, because they're still probably edit it, it from should this. probably edit that out there and get that off there. <laughs> Uh, but I was like, so I knew Jay before Jay yeah, existed. Oh man, I. But but the gear, the gear is a. I mean, there's no. Like, they're, they're, again, it's the same with the music. Like I says, I've not got any um, any pretenses or anything about music because good music is good music, and yeah. to me, it's good music if it does something to your brain. If it yeah. makes you feel a big emotion, then it's successful. You mm-hmm. know, it doesn't matter if it's a pop song or a metal song or a jazz song or classical music. If it does that thing to your brain, yep. then it's the most successful. Then it's then it's a success. But in terms of the guitars, as I go back to what I was saying, I've got the Gold SG, uh, and that I play a lot of the gigs. But the the backup guitar to the Gold SG, if I bust a string, yep. is a gold <coughs> uh, Les Paul copy. 
Right, okay. It's got P90s and it's those two gold guitars. But it was, I bought it for 50 quid off a guy. Right. So me and Roddy... And it's just and it is, perfect. And it's just... I mean, it's... I mean, it's no... As it's no the same as the Gibson uh, SG, but it's like it'll it'll fight man, it'll hold its own man, and it's like yeah. nobody is. Whenever anybody plays it, like Martin Malady played it, and he was like, "This is a nice guitar," and I was like, 50 quid, mate." Mm. Couldn't believe it, man. And, and well, it's, he, he you know, he's in a mood with you because he was on a few episodes back, and uh, I said to him, "Well, Jerry shaved his moustache off." He was raging. <laughs> <laughs> was he raging? I was. He's like, I'm gonna he works with him. <laughs> he was. Like, he did like the moustache. He did like the moustache. <laughs> I, I, I had that. I had the musketeer moustache for a long time, though. Yeah. Aye, aye. It was it was uh, a lot of maintenance, like eh? like I, I remember when I when I got uh, when I got married, uh, like it was like right, we'll pay for the, that's money for the 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 flower girls. That's the money for the flowers. That's money for. Do you want anything for yourself, Gerard, for the wedding? I was like, um, right, I've not asked for much. Right, what's the most ridiculous thing? I want some moustache wax. <laughs> so I got this, I got this tub in the No, 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 it came out of my pocket, like. Right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> aye, so you're playing the guitar. Yeah, you're man. Learning it, right? Mm-hmm. And y- you know yourself. Yeah. You can go to all the classes that you want. Mm-hmm. See when you start jamming with other people. Oh, that, man, that's when you, 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 you need somebody to play with. You. That's it. So, so I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've got a guitar, uh, acoustic guitar. I'm watching this VH1 classic rock thing at like one o'clock in the morning yeah. start and I see David Bowie in it doing Gene Genie. But you're actually, if, if it's a live one, you're actually getting to see Well, this, this would maybe what he's playing. I'm, exactly. So you're watching the hands, right? And I, I could see all the music videos. Mm-hmm. Very rarely do you actually get to see them yeah. actually playing because and then it's a music video. And then sometimes when they do play, it's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Or it's, a, it's recorded. It's, it's there to make it look point. flash, you know. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of the time, as we know, like with, like with the stuff that the Wrecking Crew played on or anything like uh, Tommy Tedesco's playing guitar, there's nobody that can play a Tommy Tedesco guitar yeah. part. So there's like Beach Boys songs or, there, or there's there's all these songs that these ses- that the Wrecking Crew session guys are playing on <coughs> and you can't replicate it because they're the, they're the best in the business, these guys. Yeah. But I'm watching like David Boyd, Gene Jean Genie, and he's got this Les Paul, it's like a red Les Paul way up yep. here. And Mick Ronson's got the, the wood Les Paul, the one, the one that's been, the, the paint's been taken off it. And I'm just yep. like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And the boy's got this Les Paul, and he's, it's like, I'm like, that looks like an E chord. Yep. Dun, 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 dun. I was like, right, grab that guitar. So I, grab, I, I, I grab the acoustic, and within about a second, I'm playing the Gene Genie. Right. I'm like, right, what's that other chord there? And I was like, oh, his hand's up there. And you're just, fit, and you're just stumbling yep. until you find it. So I think it was like trial and error. Anybody who has a, an actual like a uh, like studied like guitar player or whatever yep. would probably look at my technique and think it's mm-hmm. crazy but all the great guitar players are all got their own technique it's yeah. a, it, like you can learn a guitar in a way that you can't learn the violin like mm-hmm. if you're going to learn the violin then you'd stand like this you know you hold it and it's like under your it's like it kind of goes forward like that you hold it. these are the positions it's the, the hand goes like that it's the same set person. of rules every time Whereas a guitar, like who's going to tell Albert King how to play guitar? He's playing a, a flying V, strung right-handed, but he's playing it lefty. So the skinny, some people so, have it here, some people you know, have it down here, some people I, hold a pick a certain way. Some, exactly. You know, it's, and and it's that and that's the beauty. It's it's like I always say that when you're in a studio working with a band, it's like if you if the bass player has a guitar riff, right. And on the demo, the the, the bass player's playing the guitar riff. You go, wow, that's got, that's really got something. As soon as the guitar player tries to play that riff, it loses the the mojo. It, mu- yeah. it loses that thing because I always <laughs> say playing somebody else's part is like trying to copy their signature. It's like trying to forge a check, you know. Oh. So when you, see, you go to see a tribute band, or if you play like a like I've I've, I've obviously played in cover bands over the years. So the, the big uh, moral dilemma I always have is how we're we going to run this. Am I going to play this exactly like it is in the record, or is it just a a, a, a template for it. What do you thing. think? Of, what's your thoughts on actual cover bands? What do you mean? Do you mean so do you, like a, like a like a wedding band, or do you mean like a? I don't. No, sorry, I don't mean tribute like tribute band. I don't mean a, like tribute bands. Oh, well, I can tell you, right? I, I've seen some amazing tribute. The first proper gig I think I went to. I, the, my first real gig was the Rolling Stones, by the way. Yep. at the SEC that was your first gig 40 Licks Tour right? right okay which was outrageous it was absolutely outrageous wow. it, it was that's some first gig that's insane. probably hard to beat and Keith and we had like tickets that were way up in the the nosebleeds 
Yeah. And and they they have a thing where they put the light suit in it when it when it comes yeah. on and we just sprinted and jumped to the barrier and we were in the we were in the stand. We've lived it I think so we've good. lived the same life, right? So because good, my man. first gig was Metallica. And was it aye, aye. 1996. The first one cool. I went to myself yeah, with, yeah. Sorry, with a pal. Yeah. And then uh, we had seating tickets so, so did, did you do the same was this at the SECC this was down at Newcastle Arena oh is that, I've seen it there right? Eh? but this was when where was that about uh, up the top this was when oh, no. the for the viewers at home they had basically two stages with ramps going between yes but the and they did something there them. the Stones did that as well right? they had a big catwalk and then yeah but the went, audience were around them and then there was like a barrier aye. And then there was obviously all the seating. Yeah, and yeah. You're sitting in the seating when it's like the support band were like that. This is good, but it would be so much better if we were right down there. Exactly. And aye, of course, you, you, need your, you need your you need your pass thing. And uh, definitely. There's a and then we seen somebody that we know. Yeah, yeah. A couple of years older than us. He was there with his pals, and he's like, "Come down." He's like, "Just yeah. jump over the barrier." <laughs> was that like, a big jump? Was that a big jump? It was actually. <laughs> right? But back then you didn't care, right? I'm not kidding. We obviously jumped it and we just ran right yeah, into the crowd. Yeah. The security guy's not going to run after exactly, you. Man, exactly, man. <clears throat> no joke. We ended up on the front barrier. Aye, aye. Right? And this was, the front. this was back when they were like still... They were coming was this the 90s, you said? Ni- was, uh, in the 90s. What would that be, like garage ink that was at the time or that? No, no, before that. Before this was that. like load. Load, right, aye, right? aye. So this is when they were a full on drinking and like, jobs <laughs> before they cleaned the rack up right. basically yeah, yeah. and they're coming down and they're standing right next to you but you're mm. around the, yeah, the yeah. guy when he's like singing the song that's and playing all that sort of stuff man, that's right? class like. but uh, cover bands are, uh, sorry tribute yeah, bands I love are, a, tribute are a weird bands. one because I, love a tribute I go band. and see them I went to see Who's Who <coughs> right who were a, a Who tribute band obviously playing the whole live at Leeds set Wow. At, at the ABC before it burnt down, and it was just and the guy comes out in the boiler suit like Pete Townsend. Well, it's weird. Though, and the guy's swinging the mic with, uh, with the really low ceilings, smacking the mic. I've, seen, loads, I've seen quite a few different Doors ones. I've right? seen I've seen a couple of Doors ones. I've as well. seen a uh, Pearl Jam one. Wow. I've seen a Metallica one. I've seen an Iron Maiden one mm-hmm. not too long ago, and they're all absolutely brilliant. They're incredible. But at the same time, eye. there's part of me's a wee bit like. You guys are so unbelievably talented. Surely you, you would want to do your own thing. But then mm. it's that thing that you're like, well, hold on, they're probably making Good a money. decent amount of Good money, money. F- from basically having a great night playing it's songs of a songs band that, that you love. probably love. Songs that you love, aye. I think the bit that freaks me out is when they dress mm. up like them, but I understand yeah, yeah. why they do that, because aye. you're trying to create it's an experience. Theater, it's part of theatre, man. But now. then I had a friend who played in a Nirvana tribute band. Wow. And they didn't, they, cool. they didn't dress like no, them. No. And the whole thing, their thing was, you know, we don't look like them. Aye, aye. But we're just here to play the music. We're going to try and play uh-huh. it as, as perfect as we can mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, it was all about the music. Yeah, it wasn't about man. how you looked. There's a band called The Analogues that do that. And, right. and they, they, <coughs> they basically play whole Beatles albums. Yeah. And then I think they're feel like, uh, they're, Sc- they're Scandinavian, I believe. But they meticulously replicate these Beatles records that were never played live yeah. with all the vintage like Mellotrons and all the vintage guitars and amps yeah. and all the equipment um, but they didn't dress up like the Beatles because there's like there's maybe yeah. 20 people on stage sometimes when they did their orchestra stuff yeah. but um, but tribute band I remember I've seen a, a Thin Lizzy tribute band and I will recommend this Thin Lizzy tribute band I think I was like maybe 15 at the time one of the first big gigs I went to and it was at Renfrew Ferry and they were called Limehouse Lizzie. So go on your your uh, wherever your interwebs is at the moment, your social media, and follow Limehouse Lizzie because yeah. they were outstanding, man. They were absolutely outstanding. I think the thing that freaks me out and back to back guitar solos, not everything. Yeah. Like back to back, like that with the, with the big wigs on and everything. I think it was. I think, <laughs> I, think it, I think it was the see the doors ones. The doors ones are tricky because it, it's weird. The I, thing that freak the kind of thing that didn't sit right with me I just thought it was quite cringy kind of was panto. the singer trying to be Jim Morrison, Jim Morrison because right. let's face it nobody can be mm-hmm. Jim Morrison you can be John Densmore at the back and, and you're playing sharp uh, but it's, jazz uh, you can be Ray and the head's kind of bobbing yeah, like that yeah you've got Robbie doing you can be Robbie who's quite, but, but he's the guy you're looking at but it's yeah. that thing though that it was almost like it was almost like they tried to do like yeah. Like he would, sometimes he would jump sometimes he would scream so they aye just aye. tried to put too much into the one performance of where I'm like aye. he probably didn't do all that all at the same the, time aye, aye. but I, I get why them? they're doing it but I think mm. it was just that thing where I'm like 
It was great hearing oh, the tunes, but there was something about that's it weird it, about them. Like I seen yeah. Made in Scotland mm-hmm. only about a we month ago. Alawa. Did they play in Alawa? Did they played in Falkirk. It was in Falkirk, wow. And uh, I've seen them a couple of times and they were brilliant, you mm-hmm. know, but you, you don't get in, pr- when you watch the guys, mm-hmm. you don't, they don't think that they're Iron Maiden. Yeah, yeah. Right? But it's weird though because But it's it's cool watching them because they were they were celebrating it was forty years since Power Slave came out. But right, right. So they were doing a lot of songs <coughs> from that album. But they're playing songs mm. that Iron Maiden have never played live. Well that's and, it. And they, they did a quite a lot of really Power Slave. Cool they did a few songs Power Slave and them. They might wear kind of the clothes that, mm-hmm. that you're used to seeing them on stage, but yeah, yeah. they don't think that they that no. they're the guys from the band whereas but, some of the other ones I've seen it's as if they think but do you not think that's because <coughs> there's a different uh, motive when you like like there's no way that if you want the, if you want the gig of Jim Morrison and the Jim and those tribute act yeah. there's no way that you're going to play that straight yeah and but there's, there's see David Keith Moon the guy that was in Keith Moon yeah, yeah. and who's who he was. Do know he was actions. Keith Moon. He was. The, it, it was tonight, Matthew. I will be Keith yeah. Moon. And he was. He was doing it. Because you know? part of me thinks to myself, you know what? I'd love to get a Doors tribute band mm-hmm. together. But would you be Jim? You're. you're, you're but, you're well, I've, got, I've obviously got the hair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Jim would have the hair now if he was but, still alive. Like, yeah. part of me's a bit like, I wouldn't be interested in trying. Aye. I wouldn't even be interested in doing it note for note. Aye, aye. I just would love to go out and play the songs. What did you think of the uh, Ian Ast? Did you ever see Ian Astbury? I didn't like it when he. I see. I thought that as well. It was. It was a bit. I, I don't. I love Ian. I love Ian Astbury. I think the cult are amazing, but it felt a bit panto to me. Eh? I didn't like it. But I thought it was you know? like the, the try to add it. Even like the whole mm. sunglasses on and yeah, doors and everything. Yeah. You know, a bit like he's wearing the same leather trousers and everything as Jim Morrison. Yeah, that, but you know, but there was it. something. Especially it was the, especially Ray. Mm-hmm. He changed. He was using a different keyboard or something, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I'm like, no, but what hear that old organ? Yeah, man, I. Like, it, That's it. it sounded too nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I was going to ask That's you all, was it your first concert? But you, you that was it, man. Aye, aye. But uh, that was me, man. I absolutely caught the bug, man. It was amazing. But uh, so here's a question: right? <coughs> You're learning to play guitar. Yeah. Man. At what point do you try singing? Uh, probably like the first day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To me, it was never. So that's another thing as well, when I used to teach guitar lessons as well, and um, you, you know everybody wants the same thing, so you need to kind of figure out what somebody wants for one-on-one guitar lessons, which is like, which is weird because like I never went to a guitar lesson formally necessarily, yeah. but I'm teaching <coughs> people how to play and how to... But it's like, if it's like getting a singing lesson or, or getting a guitar lesson or a violin lesson or whatever, you need to see what the person's got first, you know, yeah. and, and, and ask them what they're looking for, because there's no point in teaching them uh, mad music theory stuff if, if all they want to do is yeah. play Oasis songs or something yeah. like that, you know. But, S- um, singing's a weird one because I've spoke to a lot of people now about this. Mm-hmm. And if, if you're learning the guitar mm-hmm. or you're learning the drums or that, you can go to lessons, you mm-hmm. can get other people, or try doing it like this, or yeah, yeah. You know, hold your hands like this, or try doing this or mm-hmm. that. And you learn different things from Aye. different people. But can I, can, I, can I get a guitar and show you? I can grab a guitar and show you just for two seconds. There's one in, if you go in there, aye. Pick, one of, uh, pick this second case down because that'll be in tune. This one here, aye. Right, uh, so for me, right, uh, can, 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 you still, can you still hear me, folks at home? I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> just give me two seconds. Oh, this is nice. This is the one. The, oh, this is a new one. Yeah. Oh, man. Seems pretty close, pretty close. I've pretty much broke it in. Yeah, man, it feels good, man. It feels good. I don't, I don't know if anybody can see this. We'll see, see it. We'll see it in this one. So the best thing they ever did to guitars <coughs> is build a tuner into them. That's amazing, eh? It's amazing. Cause see, the first guitar that I was using, that's that's almost thirty years old. Yeah, is it thirty years old? It doesn't have a tuner. A tuner because they, they didn't it, exist. They didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, mate. Amazing. So for me, right, as soon as I'm. I have a guitar in my hand when I'm wee. I'm singing a song with it. Because... Because we don't have a guitar. We don't have a, a guitar to play guitar. A guitar is always, I suppose, an accompanying thing. For myself. Yep. For, for, well, not no just for myself, but any music. There was never music that I listened to that was just the guitar. Yeah, yeah. You know, in my house. So to me, the guitar is always something that's in the back. But, <laughs> but one of the things... So, so I think maybe the first thing was... Is that? 
sharp. And, and as soon as you've got the two chords, you're gone. I would like to leave the city. And that in itself is a, is a people wanting to learn how to sing and play. That's very really well, Here's the thing it's though, it's, the thing I've spoke to people, how did you get into singing? A lot of them it was, me and my, my two three pals are going to start a band. Yeah, exactly. I'm mm -hmm. the bravest one so, and we need a singer, so I'm going well, to stand was in front a, of the microphone. That was the scenario with me. But so, the so, thing I've tried to say was, you can learn the guitar. Mm -hmm. You're on stage, right? Now, you think back to the first time you performed in front of people mm -hmm. compared to now, right? You were probably nervous. You probably spent half the time just looking down because you <laughs> no. were scared to look. <laughs> no, right? But... I, went, I, I, I go out there and I, and I, but I had it, man. I, but went, I went out and I was eating it up. The like, thing, though, with... I was, I was gallus. Honestly, no, the people, people have that. Because I was in a... So I was in a band, right, when I was at school. Yep. And I was the singer mm -hmm. and rhythm guitarist. Yep. And then I quickly realised that the guy who was the lead guitarist, he wasn't as good <coughs> as what he could have been. Right, and he was okay. playing stuff wrong. And then and I was like, it goes like this. And then he was like, what do you know? You're the rhythm guitarist. Don't tell me. You know? And it ended up that that guy who was the lead guitarist became the drummer in the next of course. band. And then yeah. I was a guitarist and then we got a bass player and it was like a three piece. Yeah. And I, it was a three piece, uh, me singing on guitar, my mate on bass, my mate on cousin on drums yep. but it was a three piece until we found the guy that was going to be the singer right so as as a like a short straw it was like right well jerry you you you're writing songs so you yep. you should be the singer well what i'm saying is you know you, you can get lessons you can mm -hmm. get other people showing you bits and pieces yeah a huge part of singing though it's confidence which you can't it's which on the job it's on the job training eh? teach some, someone confidence <clears throat> you've either yeah. got it or you don't and mm. that's why a lot of singers can actually fail as well i, th I think there's a the thing is that there's songs that i can't sing in the house but as soon as i'm in front of a mic you can hit all the notes so uh, sing it singing's, a, because, singing's a tough one though because mm -hmm. no other instrument do you rely so much on confidence right it's it's skill whereas singing is like you could have all the all the mm -hmm. all the skill. Mm -hmm. If you've not got any confidence, you're not going to mm -hmm. be able to do it. I think for me, like stepping up, up in front of a microphone, I was never ever worried about uh, hitting a bum note on the guitar. Yeah. You know what I was concerned you, about was singing. I was always concerned that my singing wasn't as good. Well, I was going to say, are you, you know? more confident on guitar than singing? Infinitely more confident on guitar. I I I've backed up so many acts and bands and played guitar, bass mandolin, banjo, anything and I've lo loads of keys. I've, I yeah. did a lot of stuff in the studio and there's something about when you're in the studio, it is the seat in your pants. It's like, <coughs> we always say the best idea wins. Yeah. And it's like, no, there, there's, it's no... Good. That's it's, when you've got to leave ego at the door. Yeah, because you're making what, music. What is the best mm -hmm. thing? If you, if that person over there has got the best riff, then that's, use it. Then that's the best riff. This is back to what I was saying about the guitarist bass player thing. The bass player has a riff that they put in the demo. That's the, the so the bass player's playing the guitar. Yep. The guitarist comes in and it's tries to sex it up. Yep. And then it just doesn't have that thing. So you need to have that awkward conversation if you're producing it to say, I think we need to get the bass player to play. <laughs> you know? yeah. And then that's when the egos clash because yeah. he's playing bass and playing guitar in this. What am I going to? And it's like, it's, but the yeah. idea is like, like uh, the, uh, back to the Beatles. Not every Beatle is on every Beatles song. Yeah, you know, sometimes like like uh, was it Tax Man that that that, uh, yep. that 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 whole kind of thing is Paul McCartney playing that, and it's like everybody would come to George Harrison, go, I love that soul you played, <laughs> you know, rage. But that's like a e ego. Oh, maybe I I ego is a killer for but, bands. But back to the whole singing singing. And playing, right? So if, so I was talking to a lad the other day about this about singing and playing guitar. So there's, there's is this someone you're teaching that you well, like to know somebody that I'm directly teaching but a guy that goes to one of the song clubs type things that's kind of local oh, right, stuff okay. so I was talking to this lad and he's wanting to help me sing so I was giving him a couple of and is he kind of just new to it he's new to it so it, 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 was it was specifically playing guitar and singing so that was the, so that da, 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 da. So is so he that, looking for something easy to start with like he can do the guitar he can do the singing but then, well, so then if you want to do the tournament at the same time, yeah. that's another whole ball game. I mean, I, I just I had a, I had a quick <coughs> chat. I was, we were sending videos back and forth, and I was like, when I did my first gig with my first band, <coughs> we had Day Tripper on the the set list. <laughs> and the trick is, you need to be able to do it, and they'll think about it. Plus, 
Mm-hmm. So, so, so when you're kind of playing it, it's, it's the way I describe it is it's like, it's like uh, rubbing your belly and patting your feet. Yes. You, 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 just, you just need to think about rubbing your belly. Yeah. And then the hand just does that, you know, and and that's what that's like as well. It becomes <clears throat> muscle memory. So it's like and you have a conversation. And it doesn't really matter. And there you go. And then, and then you're in, you're in. You know it's almost mean? like I remember watching uh, Rayman Zerick from the doors. Yeah. Talking. He obviously didn't have a bass He's got player. that left hand so took it away, yeah. He would be playing a riff, and it'd be playing over and over, and he said, yeah. I can have a conversation. I can and then that's that. it's muscle memory. This hand here, he can throw in wee exactly. bits and pieces, he can do a solo, but this one just keeps it going. That's this one's right. linked in with John that's on the drums, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's going and going, but that's it. it's just practice. So, uh, so, that, so that's my advice. My advice is just get that one thing mastered first. Yep. And then when you've done that, then you can, it's muscle memory, you can do anything else. But the ticket I always say to people is, don't think about it. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't know, I don't know how Another else to describe it, well, you know? I've noticed as well, though, see, see um, even now, like I, <coughs> I do, do the pubs, uh, yeah, play the cover songs and that, and I don't think there's a song I do that's mm-hmm. 100% perfect to mm-hmm. the original, right? But see if you're learning something, you could practice it forever. Oh, I And still not play it. Sometimes I'm just like, you know what? I'm just gonna. Sometimes I'll, I'll just be. I'll be playing it. Oh, and yeah. I'll get in between a song and I'll just go. I'm just gonna go for it. And I'll announce what the song is. Now I have, yeah, I yeah, have to yeah. play it. And mm-hmm. you know what? Sometimes it takes two or three attempts oh, of yeah. playing it before. Like I done a song uh, the other day, and it was Angels by Robin Angels, Williams, aye. right? And I'd, I'd seen somebody it's else. A, it's an incredible I'd song. I'd seen someone else do Guy it. Guy Chambers is a great song. I'd seen one. someone else do it, and I was like, "See that? I mean, you, you get." Stop mm-hmm. playing. The, even if you learn three times more songs than mm-hmm. you want to play, you still feel like you're stuck doing all these songs. So I'm right. like always trying to add new stuff. Mm-hmm. And I played it, and I was just like, at the end of it, that was fucking awful. <laughs> <laughs> right? That bad? Uh, uh, well, I was probably being harsh on myself, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But I was just like, I, I mean, it's a, it's a dirge though. Yeah, it's a dirge when you think. But about I was it, just yeah. like, that It's a great song, but it's like, what, what key is it? What key is it? In, is it? I don't remember. Is it, is it, is it oh, that's too low. What would it be? Let's sit away. None of that was the easy part. Everything was when it got to the chorus. Is it F sharp? I don't think it's. But my point it's, being it's though, it's diatonic though. My point it's being though that I played it first time, I was just like, that Aye. was pretty poor, and yeah. it probably wasn't that bad. But I, I done a couple of bum notes and stuff. Aye, so that's what you do, man. Eh? Next time I was like. I'm going to do it again. Mm-hmm. And, you know, second time I was like, that was fucking great. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but that's, you've got to sometimes, it's we, weird. We always you, talk about you do, do you do covers? We do covers. So we have, we have Jerry Sun, the Smoking Gun, and we also... The Mini Guns. The Mini Guns is, is, yes. is, is, is the functions and... Uh, so is that just yourself and one of the It's Well, we, we, we do it as a full band, so the actual band, so, so the Jerry Sun, the Smoking Gun band at the minute, is, it's always been myself and Roddy. So I'm guitar. What's Roddy playing? Uh, he's a guitar player. Right, okay. Uh, and he, he kind of co-writes a lot of the songs and stuff. Um, and we've got Ricky and Aaron Hobcock for The Colony. Yep. They I had Aaron on. The, yeah, I remember. I uh, was speaking about you. Yeah. Was he speaking I, 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 I need to catch up All on bad. One. All bad. <laughs> I expect nothing less. <laughs> but they're, they're, they're amazing lads. So they're... Uh, we, and we live in each other's pockets, us guys. So like, how you did know. you get end up mixed up with them because they've obviously got the colony busy with yeah, that yeah oh aye aye so I produced the last colony album Smoke and Mirrors with, with Roddy right and I co-wrote the songs on their current record right with them uh, because that's that's so when I, I was in a band to go, go a bit further back I was in a band called Hooks and Crooks and we released a bunch of material but with the transition for like CDs to like digital stuff. Yeah. Not a lot. It's like transitioned. I think there's like one EP on Spotify. If you want to get that, it's, it's, it's still there. I still got release for that. So stream that shit. Um, so I made a record, a, an EP, if you will. Yep. If for all the people still collecting EPs, and um, and Roddy, who's my my mate Roddy, yep. uh, we had a studio at the time. Roddy Box. It's still up and running. If you need any recordings, Roddy Box. It's the man <laughs> going. And then I'll, I'll, I'll be as well promoting Johnny's as well for all your musical needs. Go to Johnny's. Come to Johnny's. Hey, mm. Hold on a minute. Mm, I've got a band, Johnny's. right? I've got a band. That's, I've got a band that's got an album out. Get yourself on Spotify. Get it sorted. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
So yeah, so I so I worked with Roddy in this uh, at this EP, and I just had it off him, man. And yeah. if ever I needed an engineer or somebody, I would say Roddy, you free, and then he would come and would hang out, and it'd be great. Yeah. And whenever he needed another producer on a record or somebody to play something, like if if there was a band and the bass player couldn't cut it, or if the guitar player, the rhythm guitar player, or the lead guitar player wasn't there, yeah. I would come in and I would be the guy that. You know, I'll I'll do that the new and you can play it live and they do they do know ah, that, that never happens in records by the way people just in case they wonder it does it happens in every record yeah. <laughs> so yeah so I would I would be that guy and I'd co-produce records with him and uh, we would co-produce together and then I remember there was there was about five years where I wasn't in a band I was working with uh, the Free Will and Circus the band Fikin Allo uh, and it was just my mates and I was playing guitar and it was I was enjoying it again I was enjoying music again. But while I was doing that, I was producing bands and I was uh, writing my bands and and I was I was it was uh, we, we we call ourselves studio rats because eh, we live in the studio. That's yep. where that's where natural habitat. <coughs> that. So um, Roddy was in the colony at the time. He played the bass ah, in the colony. Right, okay. So he took a hiatus to the colony, and a couple of years later, maybe the kind of five years later, both of us are in bands. Roddy phones me up one night and goes, "I'm I'm in the studio next week. If you, do you fancy coming in?" Yeah. And I was like, "Well, who's who have you got coming in?" And he says, oh, nobody, he says, nobody, I just wondered just if you if, about just if you wanted to come and record some songs, if you've got any. He says, have you got any songs? And I was like, I've got any songs. I've got, I've got I've too hard, many songs. I've got hard drives filled with songs. So I just basically went to his house with all these songs on a hard drive and we just listened to him and he was like, oh, like, we should do that one, we should do that one. What about that one? I, let's do that one. Just and then like the best six or something. And then, and then, but we just kept recording them. We just <coughs> kept recording them. This is like 2019. Yep. And then it was like we should put, pro- we should probably, do, you should probably do some of these songs. Jerry says mm-hmm. to me, I'm like, right. But at the time, I still wasn't quite ready for it. But we put the band together, Jerry's son, the Smoking Gun, and uh, at the first rehearsal, Roddy came along just to check it out. It was me, Ross Pilgrim on drums, incredible drummer. Uh, Ross on drums on Instagram, he is, he's amazing. And uh, my mate Cammy, Cameron Angus, he's in, he's in a wedding band now as well. Oh, it's gonna kill me. VH5, he's right, in okay. VH5, great cover band, good for weddings and all that stuff. Um, so we were, he was in uh, freelance circus with me as well on the bass. Um, so we kind of did a couple of gigs and da da da, and it came with this and it came with that. But me and Roddy were always right, were always creating this music. I, I would write a song, bring it in. Roddy would uh, help me finish it. Roddy would maybe write a, write a song and yeah. I would I would collaborate and then that became the body of work that we made. So here's a question for you: How how do you go about writing a song? And what I say <laughs> is a big question. So what what, <laughs> what I say to people is like I I always write the music first mm-hmm. and the the lyrics come mm-hmm. last. Right, right. Right. So when I'm writing a song and I don't know if it's just the musician in me, mm-hmm. right? But the many times I'll be sitting. And I'll, I'll hear, I'll hear a song, and it'll it'll not be it'll not be the full song. It'll mm-hmm. be like one little like it could be two, hooked, two seconds of a song. song, or it could be like you know two or three words in, mm-hmm. in a song that mm-hmm. that that's sung that in, that can inspire me to write a, a whole new song. Yeah, oh, I. The song that I write it doesn't sound like anything that inspired the it from, the, from the initial thing. song it's that a, inspired it's that. It's a jumping off point, but. Right? It, it's just there's something in me that I hear something and something just clicks mm-hmm. and I'm like, I've now yeah, got this creative thing that, that's making me write this. Mm-hmm. I'll write the song and it, it's weird because for years I was heavy, heavy metal rock mm-hmm. and that is all based around guitar riffs. It's right? the riff first almost, and then the like, the Almost like, like the, the lyrics the are almost irrelevant mm-hmm. but it's... Well, we're not an instrumental That's, band, so we need to do some singing. But it's, uh, it's, ve- it's everything's based around two or three guitar riffs that make up the song. One of the things that's one of the main worrying things that worried. So I've worked with a lot of metal bands as well recently through Roddy because Roddy was with yeah. the Colony and uh, like, even like writing songs with the Colony and stuff like that. That you, you're talking about, I'm coming in to write. A, so, so when I, if I'm getting brought in to write to write a song with somebody, it's a different capacity. I mean, I write my own stuff, and I'll t- just just as a, a precursor, they, they can happen anyway. They can happen anyway, possible. Yes. It'll be a lyric, and then uh, then you come up with the music. It can be music, then the lyric. It can be both together. Right, okay. And the best ones is when it happens together. That's when yep. that's when you need to strike where the iron's hot, and it's you you, you write a you write a, a four minute song in two and a half minutes. Bang yep. bang 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 bang. You know, I've had yep. so I've had instances like that where it happens. Um, but in the capacity where you get brought in various environments to work with acts, 
sometimes I'll come into a, a session and it'll be nothing, I'll have nothing. So you'll come into a songwriting session and they'll say, right, what have you got? And I, I like it when somebody's got something to start with. It yeah. could even just be a title that they like the sound of, yeah. or it could be a chord progression or a feel or a groove or something. It's good to have a starting point. Yeah, yeah. But when you're in a scenario, a lot of times they didn't have anything. Yeah. And I was in a session recently where um, they didn't have anything, but they knew what the BPM was supposed to be and what key it was supposed to be. <laughs> right, okay. And I was like, okay. So, uh, so it, has, it has to be a uh, whatever. I can't. Even, I was like 100, 140 yeah. BPM because that's. I don't know if they had like if they had did like AI. I don't know if they went in chat but what is the what is the the what's the, what's the stats for the best number one song? Oh, so it was yeah. like it had to be this, it had to be that, and I was like, so what? I don't, it, don't know if I like that. <laughs> it was really weird, but um, yeah. but that's just an example. Sometimes they've got the li- so the, an example with the metal guys. A lot of the metal bands they come into the studio with three four riffs, and they try and tie them together, structure them into yeah. a song, and then a lot of time they've got what they believe is the the arrangement of yeah. a song. And then they'll bring me in sometimes a metal bands to write the lyrics and work with the vocalists to get it so that it so that we're ri- so that we're writing lyrics that mean something and that so that we're also writing melodies that are interesting for the singer because yeah. a lot of the times in bands this isn't a, this isn't a, um, any band in particular but there'll be somebody that's a driving force in the band you know yes. there'll be the guy that writes the song, it'll be the singer, it'll be this, that. But a lot of the time, no everybody is as actively involved. So you could have even like a, you know, metal bands, it's, it's kind of like that. that well, I've spoke about this. I've, I've asked this question mm-hmm. to a lot of bands. What makes the band work? And I, and I don't mean in, but <coughs> in success. What I mean is uh-huh. what makes the band work? And what you find is most bands, if there's three, four, mm-hmm. five guys in a band, most bands will have a band leader. Mm-hmm. And what about, I mean by that is that I don't mean a dictator that no, no, tells no. everyone what to do, but most bands will have one, maybe two leaders mm-hmm. who they steer the ship mm-hmm. and everybody else is happy with their Aye. judgment, that they're happy to to get behind them mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. support them with whatever direction exactly. they steer yeah, it. Yeah. And it's not them saying, you do this, you do that, mm-hmm. that, but that tends to be how I think it works Aye. for most of the time. I think um, you can't, so you want everybody to have an equal say in the big decisions, but ultimately somebody has to be the person that's pushing it a lot yeah, of Yeah, somebody's are the driver. And I think the, the great thing about work, me, and, me and Roddy and Jerry Sun and the Smoking Gun is that we're, we're kind of both that guy. Yeah. Ro- Roddy is like, Roddy's the type of guy where if you, like we'll, I will come up with a song and Roddy will say something like, "What do you think the video should be for this?" And I'll go, "Oh, it should be a, it should be like a James <coughs> Bond spy thing, yep. where there's a heist and there's a bag filled with gold or something like yep. that." And then and then Roddy goes, "Sounds fucking class. Let's do that." <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, that was just that was just an idea." And then you and then you start flinging the idea about, and Roddy's the guy that will go, "Right, so how do we do that then?" And I, I'm like, "Well, I guess we need a to rent a place." And, and it's like, "Right, okay." Jerry, you you rent the place then, and yeah. I'll and I'll phone this guy. And it, there's something about the more time I think seeing the bigger picture. I think the more time that bands spent. So this is another thing as well. You need it, it's boring, but you need to have meetings. You need to have band meetings. Yeah. You need to have production meetings. You need to have uh, Zoom calls when you discuss artwork or uh, with artists that are maybe doing your art. Yeah. Or you need to have a Zoom call and you need to share the screen with guys like me if I'm mixing or producing your record yep. and when I'm if I'm taking mix notes and I'm on a, a call with a band there's maybe one guy there you know it's not always the whole band yeah, yeah. so there's always somebody that is like really driving it yep. so that's good but but the, the best scenarios happen when you have that time as a group to discuss the stuff yeah. so if, we, if we've got a single releasing we'll go to the pub and we'll have a couple pints and we'll just talk about daft ideas yeah. For what we want to do next, or or, or video ideas, and and then then it materializes. You it's know. funny when you're talking about that because when I'm saying songwriting, so initially I'm coming from a rock background, mm-hmm. very guitar riff oh, orientated. Once I started doing cover songs mm-hmm. in the pubs, it's the acoustic guitar. Aye, and it's There's so, no guitar it's riffs. so confined it pretty that, much it confines you. Aye. But then it's all melody. It's all vocals. melody. It's the whole thing's melody, man. So now I'm trying to find the, the sort of the middle ground That's between it, the two. 
it works really well. I, I, I still feel infinitely more comfortable playing a guitar than I do singing. And for me, the trouble is that when you get to, like I'm not a big cover gig guy. I know I do, I do cover gigs and stuff like that, but there's something about if I've got my Les Paul and my, my amp, I can just go, and I'll just play for as long as possible. Yeah, yeah. You know, whereas that's disappeared already, more or less, you know. Yep. And there's something so empowering, whereas like when you're playing an acoustic guitar, the thing that really, this is not a slight in anybody that I go see gigs, but it's like, the, I can't, I'm not a big guy for. <laughs> want to really hear that because it's kind of like if you if it's particularly if you see a lot of acts they're not coming to my face <laughs> <laughs> but no no but like i mean that's that is all right for some songs but you it can't depends eat. what you're after like like aye, like I'm, do, I'm doing the cover gigs it doesn't make I, my hairs in the back of my I'm, 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 i'll be honest i'm not doing it aye, for aye. anything other than to make a bit of extra cash right? well that's fair aye, that's fair there's other people i think have are a bit delusional with mm -hmm. I think they think that uh, you get students in mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they, I think they think playing the gambler <laughs> that, that they're, uh, they're about to like hit Wembley next yeah and yeah like, what's the one wagon wheel wagon wheel that's another I was talking to Scott really Ashworth and I said wagon wheel aye. is the new brown eyed girl I, that's fair that's fair aye. And, I, and I don't it's weird yeah, like, yeah. I remember hearing that for the first time all them years aye, ago aye. Well, that's, a, that's an alright song. I've never played it in my life, but right. I, I could tell. But, uh, you, I could tell you what the chords are. It's strange though because you you go, <laughs> why why is that song so popular? Aye. And then this song isn't. Mm -hmm. It's strange when you try to. It's like Tennessee whiskey. It's got two chords. Or well, somebody there. asked for that the other day, and I, I yeah. just say I can't play it. It's two chords, man. Hey, but boring. it's it's it is boring. It's it's the melody. I don't know if you've seen this thing, right? So uh, a one five six four. Right, mm -hmm. that's so. I, I didn't. I want to get any like musical music to hear. Is that. this the one where you, there's a million songs based around that yes. four chord structure? It's this generation's uh, twelve bar blues. Yeah. The, the, or, or is that not the? I think with or without you know that falls yeah, into. Yeah, that's the awesome. There's so many different variations, that's it. Aye. and you know what? It works amazingly sometimes because it has the the the, the tension when you want it, yeah. and then yeah. and then it, that's pulling you back to. There's, there's, but there's so many when you go to the nights where there's acoustic guys I don't think they realise that if by playing by putting a cap on it and playing the same chords yep. it's still the same thing because the, yeah. the motion the motion is still I mean I'm not asking I'm not expecting them to play a uh, free jazz man I'm, you know, I'm not, cover I'm, gigs is, know. is an interesting one because I've, been, do, I've been doing it a while now and uh, so it's funny though because there'll be people who will ask for songs that like, like I had somebody come up and ask me for some uh, Rory Gallagher I mean now I'm like that's a big ask there's, there's only one mm -hmm. song I can play mm -hmm. by him but I was like what is no, it do you get the slide out Bad Penny right 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 I says but there's no point me playing it because nobody else in the pub knows it well, I'm, I'm being paid as to, a, to entertain the pub you're so right as a music guy right, we, we'll do songs so I, I'm a massive Stevie Wonder fan I love Stevie yep. and we would do uh, <laughs> we would do like Sir Duke yeah. and when you play Sir Duke they would, and there's some hard runs there's a big with the horns and stuff so you'll do that and you'll be loving it and two guys at the bar will be loving it. Yeah. And everybody's just, everybody's just going. I think you've got, I think you've got, <laughs> this, I think you've got to remember that you, you're there. Yeah. You're getting paid. To you're getting paid. Entertained. So that's why yes. you've got to do all the, all the bog standard so crappy for, songs. So and you can me. chuck in a couple I, of the so ones for me, in there. So for me, that's the most heartbreaking thing. So you're saying that, that, that particular rhythm kind of grinds on you a bit. What it's the, a bit repetitive. The one that I, irritates me is when you get two guitarists that, that come up and they both do the same thing. Yes, that's that drives me up yes, the wall exactly. because I used to play a, as part of a, a duo, mm -hmm. and, and the reason that it worked is that you're doing different was things. The other guy was doing rhythm. That's it. Counterpoint, right? man. And I was doing lead. Now, mm -hmm. I wasn't doing lead for the entire song because there is mm -hmm. no lead guitar required yeah, yeah. in the whole, the whole song. But what I would do is if if it was a bit when it was we were both to play rhythm. Mm -hmm. I would play, I would maybe pick it or I'd maybe do something I'd so that whatever I'm playing or is playing different. Versions you see or something when it's like two guys doing the same thing, I'm like, yeah, you man. might as well just, one of you might as well just stop. Aye. 
until it, 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 it. it comes down to it. And, and, and that comes down to uh, not just dynamics, but it comes down to an act as well. So the thing that uh, that puts me off about seeing guys in pubs play uh, in particular is that they, a lot of guys didn't have an act. Yep. And I didn't mean that as in it's a, a false act mm. or whatever, but it's like, when you, if you were to see Paul Natini, for example, in a pub yep. before he was famous, you were seeing Paul Natini. Yep. He was singing, he, he was he was authentic, yep. you know. <coughs> if you saw Van Morrison playing anywhere, yep. he is authentic. If you see uh, Kate Bush at any time in her life, she's giving you that thing right there that she wants to give you. Yep. But there's something that happens when you're doing it in a... In a environment like like a pub because you're you're playing you, you're and I don't know I don't even mean this to sound cruel but this is my feelings when I date sometimes is that you could be busting your ass at the gigs man yeah and you're you're only ever going to be wallpaper some of the gigs or well, sometimes and it breaks I mean sometimes the there'll people be, there'll be gigs I go to and, and I'm purely on autopilot yeah but there's gigs that you play where they will lift you we, we played the YMC and we played the Denny Gala right yep to like maybe six people in a dug in that field right. and then we played the YMCA for a 40th birthday party an hour later and when we when we finished for two and a half hours right yep. they practically carried us on their shoulders at the end of that gig everybody was so amazing and sweet and kind well, to I've us, spoken about this before as well though you, you're playing in the pubs mm-hmm. and it, it's, it's a hard thing to oh, do oh god I and it, but you're showing up to the pub number one you don't even know if there's anybody in the pub mm-hmm. right number two if there's 20 people in the pub, 20 people aren't there to see you. They're not there to see right? you. There, you there go. might be five. There might be football. I've done gigs where there's a football game in the back. And then it the minute. <laughs> it's so it funny, ends. man. It's ridiculous, right. eh? And then it's like, you've got, to, <laughs> you've got to deal with drunk folk. You've got to, oh, aye, aye. Like, can, some, I, can I go show your guitar? I had somebody come up and, no, you can't, can, can you play this? Aye, aye. No, I've not got it. Oh, but it's easy. Aye, aye. Right, but I can't remember what the song was they asked for the other day. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but, but me, it's just me and a guitar. Aye, aye. It's going to sound oh, oh, shit. There's people that will ask for me. I can't do Bohemian Rhapsody. That's exactly what I was going to say. Guy. I was going to say, people would play Queen. I was like, I am, I'm going to play Queen. You know <laughs> what I mean? Sometimes Queen. Queen's fair, I actually play Queen. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think everybody does it. Uh, everybody does it. Uh, everybody does that. I don't need to do that. Yeah. Don't stop. But, uh, I love that, man. I love that. I can't remember what it was you asked for, but I was like, mate. Yeah, it's a yeah. great song. I love the song. I can play the song. It's going to sound oh, shit it's if it's just chill. me. But uh, exactly. pub gigs are a tough one. But then this is another thing as well. So it depends why you're doing it as well. For me, right? And I didn't. And again, I, whatever, whatever I say, I'm just talking about my own experience of these things. I didn't mean to sound. Uh, I'm not trying to slag again because because it's because I do pub gigs as well. <coughs> I do pub gigs as well. But they're no. Each musician has a different act. So I used the word act earlier. So when I go on stage with Jerry Sun and the Smoking Gun, there's an act that you're seeing here. But you're playing your original songs. It's my own songs, and there's an act to how we structure a set, to the things that we'll maybe do, to the how we interact with the with the audience. There's there's a kind of. Do you not think you would have, you approach you approach that differently though because it's your own stuff, it's your own product that, that you're trying to of create course, and promote of rather than just turn up. Right, I've got three hours of playing these shitty covers. But there's a thing as well, if somebody's paid 15, 20 quid a ticket to see you, yeah. then you are playing to a captive audience. They are there to see you. So, but so, you've won them over before you started. Uh, well, a lot of times they're there to see another band, but they'll buy your merch at the end of the gig and, and yeah. they talk to you face to face and 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 you're selling yourself. So when you're playing in a band, you're not just, you're not just singing your songs because anybody could go up you're and performing. stage. You have to perform and you're selling the concept of your band. But the other thing people. as well, though, is you're probably enjoying it more than if you were well, going, course, to, going to the pub and aye. playing the cover songs. So that's so another thing as well is it's like it's very different. It's the, but but the thing that's interesting is that people who and you've been in bands as well, but people who only ever ha, only who ever have done pubs yeah. think that it's the same. Yeah, you know, and and being a guy who has grafted in studios grafted like working on records yep. working till crazy hours playing like what, what, I mean just that's what we do that's what studio rats say eh? yep. but making a record and, and then playing it live isn't the same thing as because I mean I've done cover gigs where 
I don't know the guys and, I'll, and I'm depping and you turn up and it's like okay right one two three four and you literally play two and a half hours of music and you've yeah. never said three words to these guys yeah. and it's like uh, one of the things I always say to guys as well particularly metal guys is that uh, if you want to get your chops up uh, you need to push yourself out of your comfort zone as well so I recommend playing jazz gigs yeah. to, to metal guys because it really does up your uh, your modal playing yeah. so not just your scales your, your harmonic minor or your, or your melodic minor but it will up your modal skills well, that, your that's modal not skills. a power chord <laughs> <laughs> no, yes also a lot of jazz guys didn't call power chords chords because they, they've got this big argument that you know yeah. has to have more than three notes to be a chord blah, blah, blah. but that's a triad <laughs> you are, you are. But, but that's neither here nor there but there's something different inherent in it. so a guy that plays uh, five nights a week and is playing to the gallery. Yep. That's, a, that's a specific phrase I'll use. You're playing to the gallery. How can I make these people uh, have crack or feel good? Whereas when you play your own songs and you do your own material, yep. it's a different thing because people are buying into it. And, the, and, and you know what I mean? You didn't need to, like, if, yeah. if the crowd gets quiet, you can, your, your whole live act is the thing that wins them over because there's something else that's going to happen in the next song. But I can you know? remember speaking with the, vi- the very first <coughs> episode in this yeah, podcast. the Shawnee one. No, no, Andrew Wiper. Oh, Andrew, right. sorry, aye, aye, aye. I remember speaking, no, I've known Andrew for years. Aye, aye. I can remember speaking to Andrew and obviously Andrew has done the open mics, he's done his, yeah. his cover songs and all that. Aye. But uh, he's obviously really pushing, doing his original stuff at the minute, mm. and he's getting slots and King Tots and all mm, these bits yeah, and yeah. places. And he just said it, it's so different, but it's different rewarding. Game, right? it's, it, it's he feel, different, he different feels better of doing it. And um, it might be that you go along, and mm-hmm. it might not be as busy mm-hmm. as the pub, but he says everybody's there and they're, they're yeah. listening to what you're playing, so, they're enjoying it. And, and the fact that they're totally enjoying aye. a song that you have wrote from your mind. He says it's so rewarding. Yeah, man. I, it's, I, I've been writing my own songs since like I knew the first three chords, really. Yep. And uh, in my first gig, like I says, we played like Day Tripper, we played Fire, Purple Haze. Aye. And I was like 15, 16 at the time. And uh, what else did we play? We, we opened up, uh, was it was it Miserable, the Dick Dale, uh, the, the Pulp Fiction. <laughs> right, okay. You know, that Pulp Fiction theme tune type thing. Uh, and, and in that set, we did some like six original songs. So yep. our, our first gig was like a 15 minute set. Yeah. And then within about a couple of months, we were playing pubs. We, we used to play Grabowski's, which was a pub in Larbert. Yeah, I remember just across from the, the old outside. That's in. the one, aye. We used to do big three or sets there and yep. the, we would get payment in studio time. So yep. the guy so the guy that ran the place would, would give us, um, put the money we made towards studio time at Homegrown. And we would right. we would cut like demos at homegrown. Here's a we question like 16, for you: 17. Is there one you prefer better than another, recording or performing? If so, this is a weird thing. I I, I get it's a lot of fun to play your songs and stuff like that. But if I was going to be completely honest, it's a it's a bit of a pain in the the ass to slog your gear up flights of stairs and and deal with that. And do you like being in the studio creating something from nothing? If I could have my way. I would, I would do that and only that. <laughs> but, but see these big, big bands. I, I was thinking about this other day. Excuse me. You spend <clears throat> a year in the studio. Yes. Now you've got the best gear, uh, best engineer. You know, it must be great. But then to go and perform it. If you're in such a big band, mm, say it's one of these bands yeah, up here, right? That that you turn up to the venue. Mm. Somebody hands you a newly strung guitar. Mm. Everyone's set up. All you, all, oh, you, all you need to do is walk that'd on be stage. Magic. Play your song and have fun. That would be magic, man. What a feeling oh, that must wow, be. Wow. See when you've got a cart uh, um, oh, up the stairs pain. back doing. Oh, this doesn't Carrying work five guitars and socky all feet to get to the train station. <laughs> I've did that many years. But man. Jerry, we're, we're early, relatively early in 2024. So what is the rest of the year planned for you music wise? So, so uh, we have got a couple of records we are working on yep. at the minute with other acts. We will likely be involved with the Colonies next uh, string of releases, likely. Yep. Um, We've got a couple of the records we're working on for other bands. Uh, we've been in chats with Vida to record their next uh, single. Um, nothing, nothing solid yet. We haven't agreed anything, but we're just talks in. So we've got a couple of things like that in the pipeline. But we've also got another. So we released our third album in November just there. Yep. And we played the last show of the tour was at King Tut's Swallow Hut. 
More than instruments in your band because I was having a listen earlier, mm. listen earlier today, and I was trying to think, right, who does this sound like? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's have got a, a weird sound, as in unique, mm-hmm. right? But it, I was having, I don't know, you thinking, I was like, this sounds like. The who was it I'd said? I'd said to Alison just before I came in here. <laughs> I said, this is like a cross between Red Hot Chili Peppers and Ocean Colour Scene. <laughs> Ocean Colour Scene. <laughs> but, but it's still got a different sound because yeah. a lot of your songs have got, I can hear the drums, the guitars, bass, mm-hmm. vocals. Mm-hmm. But some of them have There's got... There's always weird and surprises in the yeah, songs. Yeah, and there was yeah, a yeah. couple of songs I was like, that sounds... Like it doesn't sound like the doors, but it reminds mm. me because there's maybe slide guitar. Aye, or, or, or there's an like organ in the organ. organ. Yeah, yeah, so what is the main sort of instruments? So if, if you're going to perform live, what If are we're you, playing what live, have? primarily uh, there's gu- two, two guitars, yep. a bass, <coughs> and drums. Drums and vocals. Uh, and drums and everybody's got a vocal mic. Right. But, but do you um, experiment a wee bit more once you're in the studio? Oh, God. In, in the studio, so if, I, if I'm doing a... If, so I work really, really fast in the studio. If... if uh, in my studio in the house, everything is right there. Yep. So if I want to get a guitar part, there's a guitar there, there's, there's a bass part, there's a bass there, yep. there's, there's keys, if there's any MIDI stuff I need to record, there's mics in the room if, if I've got like uh, percussion instruments or glock and spiels in it. And it's not a big space, but it's very, it's very <laughs> clammy. <Yeah. laughs> but it's all very self contained and I work really fast, and Roddy also works really super fast. <coughs> so one of the things that alarms a lot of bands that we work with is that, like, if they, if, if, so bands might play live with each other, but they're no use to recording to like a click, for instance. Right. Now people think, oh, that's click. a drummer. Th- I mean, drummers can't play to a click. It can well, be a people bit. get really timid of that because they go, oh, that's not how they did it back in the day. But if you trace it right back, there's people that are making guide tracks. If you are playing, if you're playing a, a drum machine, if there's a, if there's a, a step, if there's a synthesizer <coughs> type thing that is repeating a pattern that's yeah. essentially a click because Look at Bob O'Reilly uh, so the Who were essentially the first band to play it's the same that's it one two three four one Aye. two so, so in their ears they've got the, the count in I mean you can hear the drums before the drums come in and, and that's what it's like so we there's guys when you're working in a studio that they think oh play live it'll be great live as a band yeah. but like even when the Beatles were recording their later albums something you know it was like the drum track would be a skeleton yep. you know that would have a couple of fills and then they would they would double up snares they would double up cymbal hits yep. on another track so that's not a new thing and there's something about recording and and, and we're pretty slick with how, how we record I, I like to think that the music it's quite slick the way it's kind of produced and stuff like that yep. but um, in terms of stuff like that you know you need if you're going to play a guitar like if you're going to play the drums you're going to play an instrument like the thing that you mentioned earlier about uh, feel, about mm-hmm. time feel. Yep. So time feel it isn't something that you can teach. So there's loads of great guitarists on Instagram. You can scroll Instagram for hours and you'll find incredible. You'll you'll find a a, a six year old Chinese girl that can play guitar better than yeah. better than Eddie Van Halen. Yeah. And it'll make you want to give up guitar. But the thing is, that's that's a different thing. You know, that's not really what yeah. it's for because ma- writing the music and making it is a different human experience than it is but if he passes the guitar shredding that you know I've got a, a good example of this cause go for it man I, I know a guy who's technically run, will run uh, rings around me aye 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 right but uh, we were both playing the same thing mm-hmm. and it was a, a metallic riff yeah man yeah man right you ask him to play it same notes but it's yeah, yeah, aye, aye. Right? No, but, but there's just there's a feel. There's, there's something, something different about happening. It. It's aye, even aye. just a. Mm. It has a. Aye, it's and that's another thing as well. The way you run into notes, aye. like tab, tab will kind of only get you half the way there. You know what I mean? You need to yeah. be able to, like the way like one. If I just set up for two seconds, like if you're going to hit a note, right? If you're reading tab, right, and and the tab says like uh, I don't know. Um, there's a feel element, like. If, that, if that's the lick, it was like seven, nine, and then a wee eighth fret there, right? Yes. So, but the thing is, they're, what they're not telling you is that wee bit or, or, or maybe you slide up to that wee bit. That vibrato, yeah. so to me, is when I hear, when I, when I hear. When I hear a vibrato, I'm like, that's what I want to hear. Because like, eh, uh, you, you can pick up a guitar and you can. You 
can tap away and stuff like that. Interest, yeah. man, if I'm being honest. You can you can kinda get all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Or you can technically, you know, you can you can sweep pick or anything like that. But there's just something about when you play the the kind of blues notes yep. and you <laughs> and you're over bed. Even just people, uh, people buy in it. People buy it and they love it, man. But this is other. That's thing. the feel, man. People want the feel, eh? I would always pick feel over. Oh, well, t- 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 technicality, aye, aye. And back to that original um, half the world away. Aye. It's very mutual. But the timing, there's something about that rhythmic timing that is teaching you something. It's like a mantra. But you, know a, I mean? you don't need to be extremely showy for it to mm. work. It could be exactly. the simplest thing ever. No Gallagher is Mr. Open Chords. Yeah. So you were talking about two guitar players doing something different. <coughs> don't get me wrong, there's some amazing guitarists out there, but I would probably always pick feel over ability. Oh, feel I. But the thing is, it's like there's something, like, like there's something about when people play, like, Th- that's one of the things that I always think is funny when people talk about the greatest, you know, they list like the greatest guitar player of all time. And yeah. it's like, I always think they're funny because there's so many blind spots in them, you know. It'll be all guys or it'll be all only rock guys, you know. Yeah. So it's like the greatest rock players in the top 10, there's no like Wes Montgomery or like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, do you know what I mean? Or like, uh, these, Pat, these Pat Matheny's not there. These or, lists are all nonsense you know, to start you know, with, though. It's, it's just crazy though, or, or, but that's, that's how it works because there's all these blind spots and stuff like that. So we've got some, we've been pretty serious up to this point. <laughs> Wait, I, so to end it, <clears throat> we've got some fun questions. You right, said you had, some, you, had, you had some questions for I had for a couple well. for you as well. I don't right. know what I did, I think it's in the house, so I think I left it in the, in the next room, I should, should I say. Right, so, um, you think of all the amazing songs mm-hmm. that have been recorded over the years. Mm-hmm. If you had the ability, what's the one song that you wish that you could have been there sitting behind the recording desk to witness it being recorded? Wow, all right. Oh, God, what, what one day I wish I I don't mean seen. it's your favourite song, but what song do you <coughs> wish you could have been there to witness it being recorded? That had been in the room. There's a couple of things that I would like to have seen. Uh, for the top of my head, uh, I would love to have seen Bonham play, John Bonham play Levy Breaks drums at Headley Grange. Yep. That kind of like, uh, what is that, Zeppelin 3 with the recorded it at Headley uh-huh. Grange with the Rolling Stones, uh, they recorded it with the Rolling Stones mobile recording yep. truck. Loads of albums were recorded, I think the Who's Next might have been recorded with that same truck. Um, or Live at Leeds was recorded with it. But um, maybe see Levy Break, uh, maybe uh, I, 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 so I, I, I love, I love, uh, I'm absolutely, I adore Steely Dan as well. Right, okay. I never really got into Steely Dan until I hit my 30s. Right. And then, and I'm obsessed with like all the studio guys. I, I, I would love, so here's another thing, right? When they talk about the best, who's the best band, right? If you could put a studio together and put like the best guys. I, I was talking to my pal who's also a big Steely Dan fan, and we were like, who would you have? And I was like, I'd have Bernard Purdy on drums, the Purdy Shuffle. Yeah, it probably would sound bloody awful. You know, and you'd have Bernard Purdy, I'd have Chuck Rainey on bass, yeah. legendary students, and, and, and I'd have Larry Carlton on guitar. And my mate was like, you've just basically named the studio band for <laughs> <laughs> Steely Dan's, you know, whatever, whatever. I think it's the Royal Scam album or something like that. Yeah. But uh, I, would, I would love to have been in the studio when Larry Carlton recorded the guitar solo for Kid Charlemagne. Yeah. Uh, do you know that song, I? No. I'll send you a link to that. Right. It's like the it's a legendary guitar show, and uh, Larry Carlton's a incredible uh, session musician. Uh, I would love to have been, and and this is a, uh, these are all weird obscure ones, you yep. know. Uh, I would love to have been in the room when Django Reinhardt and Stefan Grappelli recorded Minor Swing. Yeah, is this live in the studio? It would have been the Hot Club of Paris. Sorry, mic'd up in the studio. Mic'd up with like with one of the old. Uh, you know, the, the one mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the, you've and got the violin player, the, the, the gypsy step jazz forward guys. it's your time. That's it. That's it. Django's got his two fingers. He's only got like, Django only had two fingers and a thumb that worked. Right. And he's playing his light and fast runs on the, 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 the gypsy it's jazz amazing. guitar. amazing. See, some of the songs. I'd love to have seen that, you know. Some of the songs over the years that you're like, oh, they've been so cool. I mean, oh, there's, there's songs that you go, like, the most obvious, like mm-hmm. you, you think Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, probably, oh, but that, that one I took. But it like would probably days. have been boring that would have took to days, watch aye. it because it aye. was in so many days, bits. But and that was four track, by the way. I would love to that have seen. Four track. I would love to have seen LA Women. Be- because wow, with, with Jimbo in the toilet. <laughs> the whole song was recorded live. Yeah. And, it, and then they had obviously 
they had a bass, they, they had Elvis's bass player. Yeah, yeah. They had that another rhythm guitarist. The overdub, and, aye, aye. And, um, but it was all live. Aye, so aye. just like hit the record and, and go Incredible, for it. Incredible, man. See, songs like that would have just been. Early Woman is a great album, though. The, oh, like that, it's, it's got that, it's got a different feel for every other. Yeah. Probably because Paul Rothschild wasn't involved in it, really. Eh? Yeah. But it's definitely got a vibe that. And I don't think the recording quality is as good on Early Woman. Really, well, I think, uh, like, that's like, probably like, my favourite. I love no, no. I'm not, I'm not what saying of their albums. I think I, I love the song that there's it's got a proper bluesy feel, like <coughs> yeah. crawling King Snake, you know that everything, man. The changeling, the changeling, phenomenal. It's just, but great. there's so many, so many good songs in that. The end would have been a cool one. The end would have been a cool one to see live in the yeah, studio. Yeah, oh my, that, seen... that is too. That's they play that. <coughs> yeah, they record a second take, mm-hmm. and then they were like. I think the first half the first of that one I. was better and the second one was better there. Let's just Let's splice it together. I, I. But that's them live in the studio mm-hmm, because they've mm-hmm. just been playing the whiskey for the last that's year it. live. And that material is airtight because they know exactly how to swing it, man. Aye. Like then when you see them live at the Hollywood Bowl and yeah. they do um, when the music's over. We want the world yeah. and we want it. <gasps> well, and they go, ah! <laughs> the big scream is incredible, so man. Here's another one then. If you could get in a time machine, right. then you could go back. <coughs> Any gig in history, what's the one gig you wish you could have have been there? Uh, oh wow, uh, so I love the Beatles but I, I don't, the Beatles wouldn't have been on my list for some reason. Yeah. Uh, I've seen the song Remains the Same, the the, the, the live at Madison Square Garden with Zeppelin yeah. so many times and it just looks incredible. Who I'd love to have seen been in the audience for the Who Live at Leeds. Yep. Uh, Leeds, would have been a good one as well. Yeah, or the Dan li- Lizzie Live and Dangerous. Yeah. I would love to have been in the audience for that. I also think Credence would have been great. Cre- John, oh, John Credence! Ford, right? Did you see the documentary on Live at the yeah. Albert Hall? That would have been fire. That would have been pretty. But uh, or, or I mean, you two even back in the day. Uh, I mean, I'm not a big U2 fan. I think uh, for a long, I was a big Hendrix guy when I got on yeah. the guitar. I wanted to learn Purple Haze at that first guitar lesson. Um, so all my guitar, even stuff a, a little bit more new though. Would be yeah. quite cool. I like imagine being in King Tut's the night that Oasis were discovered. Yeah. Was it actually Ah there's rumours about that was, how, was, was it scam, actually man. how it, it's reported as happening? No, it's a total scam man. <laughs> <laughs> in your opinion? It's a total it? scam, no, I've heard I've, I've, I know. It's a scam man. <laughs> but yeah, but oh, there's, there's just so many. But everybody would say Hendrix at Woodstock. Yeah. But I would like to have seen Hendrix at the Bag of Nails in London. So the story is uh, Hendrix arrives in London and Chaz Chandler who was the bass player for the yeah. Animals is Hendrix's manager because he picked yes, him up picked up right. in New York on the Chitlin circuit which was like a, a circuit of clubs he would play Yeah. so he puts a band together they hold, they hold auditions yep. they get the, no red no bass guitar the mighty Mitch Mitchell and drums they put them together and I think the first gig would have been at the Bag of Nails one of the yeah. first gigs so they're playing this week after hours club that all the celebrities used to hang out Paul McCartney's there by chance just after late at night getting a bite to eat and having a drink or something and he hears he tells the story he hears, he hears the sound of the the kind of sound of a loud electric guitar get plugged in yep. and he says and Hendrix does his whole act to like four people yep. and he says the next week he played there the next week and the place was packed and, and Clapton was there yep. and Beck was there Townsend was well, there I've got, I've got the Beatles, um, all the Beatles were there I, like, I would love to have seen the moment when the king was dethroned. I'd love to have seen the point where uh, Clapton was no longer God or something like that, you know, because <laughs> that was the 60s well, thing. Well, I've got Tom Russell coming on. Right, oh well. Wow. Right, and uh, I was watching an interview with him and he was saying, that, oh, this was like, you know, back in the <coughs> 60s, he was in London. Yeah, yeah. And I can't remember what it was that had happened, but he, he says he was wandering about, to, mm-hmm. you know, trying to think, I don't know if he'd finished his work or yeah, whatever it yeah. was. Wondering about it, he was trying to just where will we go for a drink? Mm-hmm. I says down this wee alley, here's some music playing, mm-hmm. and there's obviously the guy on the door. Mm-hmm. And he's like, You can go in if you want, it's free, you know, mm-hmm. there's no charge to get in. Yeah, we'll not get anywhere else to go, let's go in here. He says, You went in, and uh, down the left hand side, yeah. there's the bar, he says, There's about maybe like 20 30 people mm-hmm. hanging about down there. You look down the other end. There's just a wee stage in the corner, three guys, aye. and it was Hendrix. Hendrix, there you go, aye. Bef- wow. And it was, bef- I think uh, they were doing a few warm up gigs bef- yeah. before they were and discovered. Maybe it was maybe the bag of nails. It was maybe maybe, the maybe nails, it was aye. the same one, but I was like, that's yeah. pretty cool. That's killer, man. Right. But there, there's, I mean, other than that, I would love to have seen Kate Bush. I, I, Kate Bush is absolutely adore Kate Bush. I would love to have seen her live because <coughs> the show would have been something else. It's like, what, yeah. like when I say act, I'm not just talking about 
how you play the songs or how you interact with the crowd or what you kind of do. But like when you see something like Maiden, for instance, yep. there's an act that you're seeing there. It's like theatre, yeah. you know. So when people are buying their tickets for that, they're already in, investing that this is going to be something special. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you turn up at a pub, you can't really have that type of creative license no, with it. Of course you know? not. So Millennium back in the 80s would have been pretty cool. Wow, wow, that yeah. Would have been they were quite, huge, man. Eh? Quite cool to see. Right, last question for you. Mount Rushmore, who is your four musicians or bands <laughs> that for yourself is right, your right. perfection? Do you want musicians or do you want bands? It's up to you. Right. Um, musicians? Oh, that, that's hard, man. That's hard. Uh, putting you on the spot here. You're putting me on the spot. I wish I'd, I wish I'd done my homework before that. Uh, how many people are on Mount Rushmore? Four. <laughs> four. <laughs> don't get the baby like No, I know, I was going to say I. <laughs> That's tricky. I mean, I could just say the four Beatles. That would be dead easy. Yeah. That would be dead easy because, but I think if, because I could get, I could get really obscure. You can't even say yourself. I'm, <laughs> I'm nowhere near that, I know. I didn't want to be carved in in, in, in. <laughs> I'm quite happy with that. Um, but if I was going to be like, specific. Yeah. And I was going to say, Singers, I could say I could date with singers, I could date with musicians. But for musicians, right? Yeah. Paul McCartney is the the most overall rounded musician. I think. Yeah. He can write. He can write. He can produce. He can play every instrument. He's such a beacon and an icon of contemporary culture as to what he's yep. contributed. So, I'd have to say, for me, it would have to be a songwriter. It would have to be songwriters up there. Pete Townsend. Pete Townsend is an incredible yeah. songwriter. I'm trying to think who, who who would be the last. I mean, Pete Townsend's certainly up there. I adored the Who back in the day. Like uh, McCartney's up there. You'd have to put Lennon up there as well because yep. it's two sides of the same coin, really. Eh? Um, oh my God! So there's a, a, so many I'm bands. Kidding myself, I'm kidding myself. Like, some of the, some bands are just yeah, man. It's pro- four's not enough. No, no, no I'm not at all. Make you pick one more. Aye. <laughs> Who have I ever gone so far? Do you know what? Fuck it, I'm just, I'll just put the Beatles up with the Beatles. <laughs> right. I'll stick Ringo up there as well, mate, and George we'll Bond. <laughs> Jerry, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure speaking anytime, to you. Anytime, anytime. Until anytime, next man. time. Anytime, anytime. See you later, guys. Make sure what? you enjoy Spotify stuff. That's it, Jerry Sun <laughs> and the Smoking Gun. So get yourself there. <laughs> <laughs>